right. Welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Today, my guest is Christian Torres, a good friend of mine and a professional photographer, local photographer out here in Las Vegas. How you doing today, bud? Doing good, man. Yeah, me too. I'm really uh, having a good day today, man. Got my workout in, got my meditation in. I'm fucking feeling great, bro. <laughs> so... Yeah, we were talking about um, all the crazy stuff that's going on out there on the strip, right? Like, uh, I guess they're closing the casinos or gearing up to, they, maybe they're going to close it all down again. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's just all up in the air right now. Yeah. And it's a fucking trip, man. Like, the MGM's fucking bailing on properties. And uh, it, uh, I don't know, it's uh, it's it's crazy. If those casinos shut down, man, who knows what the hell's going to happen out here in Las Vegas. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I saw some cool stuff you did on uh, online, man. I saw that uh, uh, the film print that you had developed, the picture of uh, of you actually. I think you're. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. Tin type. What was it? It's a tin type. Tin type. What does yeah. that mean? Uh, I believe it refers to the material that it's developed on or uh, printed on. I could be wrong, but it's like uh, wet plate photography. You know, it's like one of the er earliest forms of photography oh i'm gonna look it up so i'm not sounding completely ignorant <laughs> about it but this is the picture I found it on you i got it on your instagram right here right this one yeah yeah that man. is beautiful man yeah super beautiful yeah i'm so pretty <laughs> yeah i mean like the, you, you know the age of digital photography yeah. there's just so much uh so much to a uh, a film print like that yeah, it's really interesting stuff, man. Like uh, my friend Myron's been doing it for a little bit. It's uh, it's pretty cool. It's really toxic. Yeah. Yeah, it stains everything. <laughs> it's pretty interesting <laughs> stuff, man. What's the process like? I mean, uh, talk me so it. man, I kind of sound so ignorant. It's oh, okay. I thought you were doing it with Myron. Sorry. Well, no, no, no. I was just I was just there. He was he was testing out his chemicals. So okay. He just needed somebody to shoot. Uh, ah, but yeah, so it's it's uh it's pretty interesting stuff. So you have to like get a piece of metal, and then I think they put like, man, I, I'm so not <laughs> an expert on this. So no uh, worries, yeah. man. We're just talking shit. Yeah. So you like you have to put you have to take this piece of metal, and then you put like uh I think it's col uh -huh. I could be wrong. Col colodine, colodine. It's uh -huh. a chemical, right? You put this chemical on there, and once you put this chemical on there, it lets the silver nitrate adhere to it. I believe that's how it goes. Um, but yeah, after, after you put the wet collodine on this on this plate, uh -huh. uh, the rest has to be done in complete darkness. I believe. Okay. Because then it becomes photo uh, like uh, photosensitive. You know what I mean? Like for, for light or whatever, um, light sensitive. So then you put it in a film holder. I think I'm missing a couple steps, but yeah. it's, it's pretty fucking complicated. And then uh, you put it in a film container, and then you take it out, and then I think you have to let it sit for a certain amount of time in the, the silver nitrate. Anyways, it's a pretty interesting process. It's like, you know, from like the 1850s. It's pretty cool. Well, it definitely comes out looking amazing. I mean, uh, like your hair here and there one more time. That picture just blew my mind when I saw it, man. It definitely, uh, I was like, <laughs> man, I haven't talked to Christian in forever, bro. I got to get him uh, on the podcast and see what he's been up to. Yeah, yeah. It's so. it's fun. Yeah, you got a lot of cool stuff on here, man. Uh, so uh, what you been doing with your time, man? You've been making some cool pictures going on, or you've been camping. Uh, a lot of people doing all kinds of outdoor adventures, getting away from the city. Yeah, I've actually I probably traveled the most this summer. Yeah. Like road road trip wise, it's been pretty pretty interesting. Like it it's been it's been good. It's been good. Um, just been a lot of lot in Utah and I went to California a bunch and just. And it, it hasn't been the best for shooting. Like a lot of the times when I went out shooting, it was like like the conditions were a little rough, like windy and stuff like that. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. Nice. Where'd you go in Utah? I go to Utah a lot. Oh man, so I went to man, I went I went to a couple of places that I've never been to before this year. Uh, Capitol Reef. Have you ever heard of Capitol Reef? No. -uh. Uh, I went up to Capitol Reef, Factory Butte. Um, where else? I actually I didn't even go to Zion. I think I stayed in Zion one night, but uh, I didn't go. In. I think the park was closed anyways. Okay. Um, and and uh, Oh, yeah. So this summer also I did a bunch of um, off-roading. I went to a couple of places and did trails, you know, in a truck. 
That was fun. Yeah? Yeah, like Tokerville, Bar- Barracks, Barracks Trail. Um, yeah. So, like, I, I did, like, it was, like, a mixture of, like, going out shooting, and then, like, one day I would go out and meet up with people and do, like, four 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 by four trails, you know, like Tokerville. And, that's awesome. Yeah, it was pretty fun. I love Rafa Roden. Yeah, I, that's all new to me, man. I've only been doing it for, like, a year. So, oh, yeah? Yeah, it's all new to me. I've destroyed five tires in the last year. <laughs> so, you, uh, so you're so you taking your own uh, vehicle out there off-road, and you get a new vehicle to off-road with? Or? Yeah, I got a Toyota. Oh, nice. I love Toyotas. I got my 4Runner. Oh, you got a beast. A four- oh, dude, I have a, I have an FJ. So, oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Friggin' Toyotas just make great vehicles that last forever, man. Yeah. I can't stop those things. All my friends are making fun of me, like, yo, dude, you need to get better tires. I was like, no, they're brand new. I just, I like... <laughs> No, yeah, I need better tires. Yeah, for off road and for sure, you don't yeah. want to take road tires off road. I mean, they, it was, yeah, it was a, it was a learning thing for me. I was like stubborn. I was like, no, nah, they're fine. They're brand and they're new. They're expensive, right? I mean, those big old meaty rubber tires, yeah. are, they cost a lot of money. Well, the what, the ones that came on the car, they were like, uh, they were like less than a year old. So when oh, I yeah. first got like I, I got a flat, I took it to discount. They're like, oh, you want to warranty them? And I was like, yeah, sure. And they got warranted. And uh, I keep on puncturing them, so <laughs> it's cost me like twenty bucks to replace. But still, like it's yeah. pain in the butt. Yeah, yeah. Off roading though, bro. That's fun. We were uh, we did a little off roading up in yeah we came we went to Arizona and uh, our homie has a Jeep that he's got all set up to take off in the dirt and do all kinds of fun stuff. So yeah. he's taking us out. It was a blast. Yeah, I don't try to do crazy shit. Yeah, it's it's so weird. Like I like the flats that I get are on like graded roads. I'm like going and I forget, you know what it is? I don't ever air down or I didn't. Yeah. I would never like lower the air pressure in my tire. Oh. So that's where I fucked up. And then like, I mean, I remember, dude, the last time I got a flat, I did two in less than four hours. <laughs> it was bad. I got, I almost got stranded. You it only was, got one spare. Well, yeah, dude. Like I, it was, it was bad. It was bad. That sucks. It was fine. I got some dude named Billy. Shout out to Billy from Oklahoma. The dude picked me up. Took yeah. me to the tire place and brought me back. Was, oh, what a gangster. Dude, it was dope. I was like, thank you so much. Like, it was, uh, yeah, I was like I was like 11 miles from Beatty. So, oh, really? So it wasn't that bad, but it was it was hot. Yeah, you don't want to walk 11 miles in the summer. Yeah, well, then I have to bring a rim, too, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Because I didn't have another. <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. That's yeah, that's I mean, a little much yeah. to ask anybody to do. Yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty nice of that, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's beautiful out there. I was just checking out uh, Capitol Reef, like you were saying. Yeah, Capitol Reef uh, was closed the first time we went out there. Yeah. Uh, went out there f- with a friend. She's the one that showed me where it was at. And then the uh, the second time I went, it was open, and it was like crazy, dude. Like Utah, like it didn't even seem like Utah got shut down. Oh, really? Yeah, I was out in Utah a lot, and like everywhere we went, it was like, it was like it was like nothing ever happened, you know, except for the parks were closed technically but there was yeah th- there was thousands of people out there it was pretty interesting yeah it's beautiful up there man i i absolutely love uh utah we go up uh regularly and mess around in like the saint george area yeah yeah saint yeah. george is cool i was just i was yeah i've been there a little bit i went and did, did some motorcycle riding out there with another friend of mine nice and that was interesting because I don't really know how to ride motorcycles, but <laughs> some dirt bike shit. It was fucking. It was cool. Dirt bikes are way more fun than street bikes. Oh man. yeah, yeah. It was taking it was, them off jumps and shit. It was f- no, 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 dude. It's like the sixth or seventh time I've ever ridden a dirt oh, bike. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. It was uh, it was scary. <laughs> I'm like following this guy, like my buddy Spencer. Shout out Spencer Burton. He's a local photographer as well. Oh nice. So dude has been wor- uh, riding his bike for like. 20 years there's a whole life longer than that like you know so i'm trying to follow this guy up a hill in a two-stroke it was it was hard <laughs> it was bad it was fun though it was a lot of yeah. fun luckily i didn't get nothing happened it was fun nice yeah we used to have a um a little night i actually my my cousin brian used to race motorcycles like professionally i think oh wow and um and he gave us one of his uh, old ra- uh, racing bikes from when he was a kid because he was he was a few years yeah. older than us growing up so it worked out perfectly you know we got his kid bike and then he went on to do the the you know teenage yeah. more adult size stuff and we just used to fucking take that thing up jumps anything we could find yeah. man and it would man that thing was smoke too it yeah. goes really fast little 90 yamaha yeah it was probably a two-stroke yeah those things are fast like they I'm, are the one i have is an, is an old 1989 uh kawasaki 
KX125. Yeah, yeah. So, like, a buddy just gave it to me. He's like, he's like, you could have it if you get it started. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. And then, like, he didn't think I was going to get it started, but it started. So I was like. Nice. It's old, though. Yeah, but it, it works. It's worked. It's fine. It's That's fine. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, my brother just uh, recently got back into the uh, hobby because he was always the mechanic one, you know. I'm the... I'm the nerd and he's the mechanic and he can just make anything run. And uh, he got himself a like full size two seater go kart with uh, roll bars and oh, everything shit. for like a hundred bucks because yeah. it didn't work. And he's just like, I can, yeah. I can make engines work. He's really great at it. He loves it. Um, and so yeah, he we had it. He had it working right away. And we took it out to the desert out here and we were doing donuts and hauling ass all over the place. Dude, it go, awesome. it smokes. Yeah, so much fun. Yeah, like so, I've never I've never done that before. Like that whole that's all new to me. You know what I mean? Like oh, yeah. I've never grew up doing any of that stuff. So, yeah, now I have a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, I'm gonna hit you up next time we're going out to yeah. the desert to I'm, mess around with the, uh, the go kart and stuff. I'm down. I got I got a little trailer for it and everything, so I'm good. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, he just started working on. Uh, he had found a mini bike. They had. It's just. It's like this big, yeah, but yeah, he put yeah. a big fucking engine underneath it and got, you know, custom wheels and stuff. And so you're like, you can barely fit on it. And then it just goes, <laughs> it's hella funny looking. A <laughs> bunch of big boys were all over six feet tall riding yeah. this bike that's like it's so like, low to the ground. Like a circus bike. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, you feel like one of those big bears on it where you're just like, oh, man. <laughs> that's but, funny. Yeah, he's, he's always, now he's going to get uh, all kinds of projects going, I'd imagine. Yeah. I went over to his house the other day, and he's got uh, motors everywhere. He's fixing a weed whacker and fucking motorcycles and everything. So wow. it's, it should be fun. Yeah. We'll have an arsenal of uh, off-roading vehicles to fuck around with. So, But, yeah, man, uh, you were talking earlier about uh, Ian Rudder and Silverlight, right? Oh, yeah, that's uh, some guy that I discovered not too long ago. It's, like, about the same time that... My friend Myron started doing ten types. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I got his website pulled up. He does some cool stuff here, man. Yeah, he. Do, I mean, that stuff is nuts. He's doing like. He turned a box truck into a camera. I think I saw pictures of that down yeah. there. Oh yeah, look at. It. Yeah, he. Yeah, I think he has like. What is it like the world's largest, uh, wet plate. Yeah, I was saying he took this picture of this guy. That's yeah, pretty. Yeah, I think this he, guy. Yeah, I think he did it. He actually turned a house in Salton Sea into a camera. Oh, is that it right here? Huh? It's it's crazy. Oh, you can't click on the pictures though. It's basically like, I think the print like it's like it's like printed on glass. It's oh yeah, like a, look at that size of that thing. Yeah, it's like the size of like a sliding glass door. It's insane. Wow. Oh, yeah. See, they're carrying it here. That yeah. thing's huge. Yeah, it's crazy. Holy guacamole. Yeah, it's insane. The dude, he's, he's, I think he just like does the largest wet plate photography in the world or something crazy like that. It's That's really, impressive. Very interesting stuff. Oh, yeah, he's got a camera camera truck. Yeah, that's his, tr that's his camera. Yeah, it's interesting. That's insane. Yeah, apparently he used to be like a professional photographer, and then he started doing that wet stuff, which is really interesting. Wow, what an impressive dude. Yeah, I'm going to start this, doing it one day as soon, right, as, yeah. as soon as I get a job again. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's not cheap. <laughs> no, it's it's pretty it's pretty pricey. My buddy, Myron, he probably uh, helped me out because he has all the chemicals already, so he's been doing it for a few months, which is kind of cool. Well, like a year now, I think, yeah. so, something like that. Nice. Yeah, it's nice to have a friend who can uh, who can help you get back in or you know, help you get started. Right? Yeah. Use it, it, stuff yeah, and it's, help you use a studio. Yeah, it's interesting stuff. It's funny because, like, uh, I'm going to call him out right now. <laughs> we, went, we went out shooting, like, like a few years ago, and I was doing large format photography, and he was like, dude, I want to start doing that because we were, like, out shooting stars or something, and I was just doing a long exposure on a 4 by 5 and he's like, dude, I want to do that. And I'm like, do it, man. <laughs> dude, like, a couple months later, he has, like, two 4 by 5s or he has, like, an 8 by 10 and I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Like, I want an 8 by 10 Like, Yeah, that's big. It's a big ass camera, and then he's like, "I'm gonna do wet plate." And then like a month later, he's doing wet plate. I'm like, "Dude, <laughs> like, let me get on on that, man. Come on." Yeah. Yeah. No so he just he just dove into it. So he's all about the wet plate photography now, which is pretty interesting stuff. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it, it comes out beautiful, man. I mean, it's really impressive photography. Yeah, yeah, it's super fun. 
Yeah, a lot of your stuff is nice too. You're saying uh, some of these star photos are yours, right? Yeah. On this Instagram here. Yeah, those are all mine on my Instagram. But oh yeah, man, I like this right here where you do the spinning effect. I've yeah, that's, seen that before. That's just oh, the. That's the one right there. That's just the sky moving. Like those are the stars. Because you're pointing it at the North Star, so that's what it does if you live if you leave the camera open for. And real. you just leave the exposure on for how long? Uh, I think that's like two or three hours. Oh wow! Yeah. Really? Is that what you're doing there, huh? Yeah, but you could do that. Like you know, a lot of digital photographers just take like 400 pictures or 200 pictures, and then they stack up on top of each other, and they get the, the same effect. Oh really? Yeah. So like, I mean, you could do it either way, but I'm also doing some weird stuff with like projection on the building to get that stuff. Like it's something that I've been uh, experimenting with. For, 3D mapping? Not yet. Like I tried that the other day for the first time with my homie, uh, Aaron Garcia. Shout out to Aaron Garcia on Instagram photography. Uh, he, uh, he has like a projection mapping little, uh, little system. Yeah. So he, like, he just got it. I was like, dude, let's bring it. Let's bring it out there. So we tried to experiment with it on a building outside. And, uh, that was pretty interesting. If you look on my Instagram, there's like another, there's another, uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Here, here. Is, uh, is this the one you're talking about right here? Nope. That's 35 millimeter projection. Oh, is that projection too? Yeah, yeah but it's 35 millimeter. What we were doing is a digital projector with uh, 3D mapping software, which is pretty. That's like that's what ideally want to, I want to start doing, but uh, I ain't there yet. It's pretty impressive stuff. I uh, I work with some guys that do 3D mapping yeah, that, uh, for corporate events. That's what's up. That's where it's at. It's it's beautiful what they come up with. Yeah, like I mean, we were just experimenting because we had neither of us had ever. Uh, like done it like you know out in because we're in the middle of the desert i'll show you yeah. this one right here that's that's a oh okay yeah the that's, one with the stripes on it yeah yeah so like that was I'll find that, it that's a digital like i took a snapshot with a digital camera but i did an exposure with the film camera so i still haven't developed that film yet so we don't know what it's gonna look like yet but. oh surprises coming up yeah it should be pretty cool that's dope oh, okay see i found it i found it this is the one you're talking about right here. Yeah, that's 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 with the digital projector and using 3D mapping software. Oh, and we kind of wow. winged it because we got yeah. there. We got there when it was. If you flip it, there's another one from a different oh, angle. Wait. This way. No, the this button way. here. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, we were like, we got there too late. It was dark, so the the little system that he has was having a hard time uh, mapping it. You know what I mean? Okay. So we were kind of like winging it. Cause it was in the middle of the night and then like we didn't, he had never used it in that situation and I, I don't know anything about it. So we were just kind of winging it. It was pretty interesting though. It was, it was fun. Like I, I, I want to do more of it. I just don't, don't have the gear. Yeah. And it's, uh, it was one of those things that like, um, like one of the examples I have, we, uh, we built this well i i didn't i just put speakers around the fucking thing but uh they built uh this like city uh out of just solid white uh, uh really reflective material so they could they could hit the projectors yeah. on it right and then they they put uh projectors in a circular truss yeah, yeah. way up in the air and then pin spotted them like it was so tight because the thing was like it was yeah. only like this big right and everything's got little movies popping up and windows yeah. and things and it, it was beautiful but it took them like two freaking days yeah, yeah. to get it all hung and then and then actually nail it in yeah. right on the lines where, where did they get the um the visuals from they made them somebody generated them yeah that's that's so cool that's yeah. what i that's ideally what i want to do like so if you look at some of those weird photographs that look like there's stuff projected on them that's a 35 millimeter projector so i'm like taking 35 millimeter slides putting it in an old school projector and then doing it that way because i don't have a digital projector i mean i guess i could just go get one but yeah whatever so but like ideally what i want to do is i want to start creating things you know to like project on to buildings and then take uh like long exposures of it that would be beautiful man yeah it's fun it's like it's a pain in the ass but it's like super fun yeah, it's it's uh it's nice and unique away from like just taking pictures of stuff. You know, you're like adding to the image and then, and then yeah, like it's it so well. dude. If you get it right, it looks crazy. But I've yeah. only done it a few times where it's like, oh, this is so cool. And then, you know, something happens because it's like film too. So there's a lot of variables that can go wrong. Yeah. You know, if you don't if you don't expose it right or you don't want the film right or, yeah, I've like one of my favorite shots that I've ever taken. 
um, I didn't put the film all the way into the camera, so <laughs> there's like a black strip on one side of it. Yeah. But it's like really cool. I was like, oh man, that's such a good exposure. If I just would have put the slide all the way in. You know? <laughs> yeah, it happens. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, and that's like uh, that's all the way back to like the original way we were making photography. Like yeah. Just- yeah, I use a four by five, so it's a view camera. Okay. Like, um, it's like an old, like a larger format. Um, it's weird. It's, it's hard to explain. There's no prism in it, so when you look through it, everything is upside down. Okay. You know what I mean? Because like all digital cameras or whatever, they you have a prism in it, so like you know when you look through it, everything's right side up. I did not know that. Yeah. Thank you for telling me that. I yeah, learned so, something new. So the view cameras are weird because there's no prism. It's just the lens. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, like, there's the film, and that's it. Okay. And there's, like, ground glass on one side. I should have brought it with me, but anyways. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, like, there's ground glass on one side. So you have to use, like, a cloth. You put it over your head so you could see what uh, you're focusing on. <laughs> like, all old-timey and shit, but... That's fantastic. It's fun. It's definitely, like, challenging. I think that's why I love it so much. It's, like... It makes you like focus differently on like on your like uh, like um, the composition. You know what I mean? Like, cause you can't just point and shoot. You kind of have to like take more time to like take the photograph. You know, it's a little it's different. It's fun. Yeah. But I also usually bring like three other cameras too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have like digital cameras doing time lapses and shit. Yeah. Like one of my friends, whenever we used to go, she used to get annoyed. She's like, "What the fuck? You and your five cameras?" And I'm like, "Dude." What do you want from me? Like, that's what you do. I'm just, I'm just. You're filming. She only had one camera, so she'd get, Shooting. she'd get pissed. And I'm like, dude, just what do you want? I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, I don't know what to do. Like, uh, no, yeah. we do. We go out now. We're um, we're doing expeditions, and we're bringing what three, four K cameras and a bunch of little GoPros. That's cool. Are, are you guys like documenting it? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. So no, what we're doing is um, I'm shooting um, like. We're doing a yoga thing where oh. I'm shooting in the middle of the woods and on top of hills and mountains and shit. So we go find really nice places to shoot, and then we shoot it all in 4K, and then I come back, and I'll show you the studio upstairs. So I got it all set up to do, like, nice hippie music with Tibetan bowls and chimes and fucking all kinds of hippie Dude. stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's coming out really good. That's cool. Like, I almost want to tell you about places that you should go visit, but I don't yeah. want to do it in the air because I don't want anybody to know where they're at. Dude, afterwards, <laughs> yeah, man. I look yeah. up. I, I got some cool places to show you as well. Yeah, yeah. But, um, no, that's it. So, we, yeah, we take out the Fujis and we take out the GoPros and, uh, and we got a little, like, solar panel that charges a battery so you can charge all your camera equipment and shit all, the whole time that's you're right. out there. That's cool. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a nice setup, man. And uh, we can go out and get a lot done. And I do the same thing, right? I'm like, like this is going to be the fucking time lapse for the morning. And I'm like, wait until like 4 a.m. Mm-hmm. And I have an alarm set. And I'm up and I pop up a fucking time lapse for the morning. And like at yeah, like 6 o'clock, you know, 5.30, I'm putting up a time lapse for the sun, uh, sunset. So I'm getting sunrise, sunset the whole time I'm there. Uh, dude, you work, yeah. you work harder than I do because I get lazy. I'm like, dude, I'm tired. I'm like usually staying up at night, shooting oh. at night. So I'm always like never, never can get up early enough to like uh, – get sunrise sometimes if i get lucky but man that's that's a lot of work it is it's it's uh you know and it isn't it isn't because it's it's just hard to get out of bed when you're camping that early and you're yeah. like you finally got cozy and it's cold as shit and you know it's like ah oh, i don't want to i don't want to unzip the you know and get up and go put pants on and go out and do it but it's like once you go out and do it it's just like oh it's yeah i don't go back to bed yeah, it yeah, took yeah. me like you know it takes like 10 15 minutes so um ultimately it ends up being not as bad as it feels like it's going to be. And then I go right back to sleep and I wake up and we start making breakfast and all of a sudden you just go, oh, that camera is probably burnt out by yeah, now. Yeah, that's true. So um, the other cool thing I did, I learned uh, I can hook up big ass battery packs to my GoPros. How? I want to know how to do that. Just with the fucking uh, USB uh, micro. Oh, shit. I didn't and think about a that. regular f- for your phone charger. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. That's a great idea. The guy I was with, um, we went out and we were um, we were shooting, and uh, he did it with his camera, but he just did it to weigh his camera down because he was leaving it out for a time lapse, and he just had this big brick, and so he was able to, like, 
hook it up to the camera and it stabilized the camera. I thought he was charging the camera, and I was like, "Why did I never think about that?" There's and I a, plugged it into pretty, my, I plugged it into my shit, and it just it started charging it. That's pretty brilliant. Just took it. That's pretty brilliant. Yeah, so you can get really long time lapses because yeah. it'll it'll suck all the juice out of your external battery, and then it still has the internal battery to run through. Hmm. So yeah, it. I was getting really long ones. Yeah, the um, so you use is that the one you're using? You're uh, actually, no. They so so um, so these three right here, they stay in the house They're permanent, and it's all like it's ready to go. Yeah. Like I'll I'll clear the the this mess right here on the table. I can clear this off and coil it back, and um, set everything in a nice place, and then we can, you know, have our living room back for a yeah. little while. Uh, and so we'll do blocks on and off. So I've been shooting all week, getting podcasts ready to go for the rest of the month or for, you know, for August. And, uh, and then, so these cameras live here and then I have a whole nother set of GoPros and like cam parks cause I just buy weird shit sometimes. So on Amazon, they have little $40 4k cameras Oh, nice! that are essentially a GoPro. It doesn't look as good as a GoPro. But when you're shooting time lapses with it, or you just need extra cameras sitting around, um, I mean, it's shooting in 4K. Yeah. It looks good. It looks good. It's not uh, it's like it's not a four. It's not a you know 400 dollars GoPro, but it's a 40 dollars 4K shot. Hmm. And so I I was ABing them next to GoPros, and I'm like, Psh, who cares which one I put up at this point? You know, they both look good. Wow. Well, hmm. um, yeah, but the GoPro's color is better. It does have better color for sure. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I only have an old GoPro. I, I want to yeah. get a new one, but yeah. The really new ones are tight, but you can get like five. Um, oh, that's a four. I like the four. It shoots in 4K. My buddy had one of those 360 ones. Oh, seen, yeah. I'm going to get some those? of those. They're so weird. Have you seen it? Have you messed with it yet? Yeah, they're only like 300 bucks. They're fucking weird, though, dude. Like yeah. messing with the footage. Oh, I haven't messed with the oh, footage. Dude, it's I've so just I've played strange, with the, the man. device. It's so strange. Like you can like. It's so weird. It's like you could literally walk around something almost. Yeah. It's really interesting. It's so it's like the weirdest thing though to like try to put it together to make it look interesting. You know what I mean? Like I think. Oh yeah, like on a two dimensional screen. Yeah, yeah. well, because you can like when you're editing it, editing the video footage, you can like switch up the the point of view. Okay. So you could do like a shot from the front, and then you can like move it around to the back, and like as it's going through the shot, you know what I mean? weird it's so crazy it's like yeah it's like 360 degree like you could edit a two-dimensional object in 360 degrees you know what i mean it's so weird that it's, is weird it's really cool though it's it takes a little getting used to though like, like i couldn't it was it's pretty difficult yeah they had um they had one over at um ari or whatever i was working and so they were using it to like do virtual tours you know oh, yeah, we'd yeah. set up some cool shit or they just do like oh it's completely empty in here it's then you show the clients kind yeah, of stuff yeah, yeah. and uh and so then you got they got a virtual tour of of these convention spaces that they can show the clients and sell the room to without them having to fly out that's, so that's really smart actually yeah it's it's getting creative man i want to get a couple because i feel like those 360 degree cameras are starting to become more of like a necessity in the day today's technological like yeah place yeah it's, it's, it's almost there it's definitely something that is way more common than it ever than it ever used to be like uh, you know like the real estate market they all do it with yeah the real they're estate all market. like was, do, yeah so it's like I mean, it's just a matter of time before people are going to get a virtual tour of anything or everywhere you go. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I'd imagine, like, you know, probably another 10 years and you'll be able to, like, go on Google Maps and go inside of, like, every public yeah. building and every roadway and it'll all be 3D. Yeah, it's going to be weird. Yeah. I it, mean, I, I think it's cool. It, it's definitely weird, though. <laughs> yeah. It's an inevitability of, yeah. of our technology, man. It's like we can't stop it from happening, right? It's it's kind of on its own path at this point where the whole world's getting digitally scanned and turning into this fucking conglomerate on the internet. Yeah. Like that's one of my goals is to go and visit uh, like the more um, desolate places. Yeah, totally. Before it's not a thing anymore. Yeah, you <laughs> should go to the coral reefs first because they're going to be gone soon. Nah, I mean... Yeah, like, I mean, I feel like those places are not desolate, though, because they're going to be, like, there's people there. People yeah. want to be there, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, I'm talking about, like, this place called uh, the Masquerim in Nevada. It's one of, like, the darkest places on Earth. Like, literally, really? seventh designated darkest place on Earth. 
We got to go shoot the stars out there. I know. I want to, but it's really far. It's like 150 miles north of Reno. Oh, yeah. It, that's a trip. It's super desolate. Like, it's in the middle of nowhere. Uh, just places like that, because I think it, they're becoming less and less of them, you know? Yeah. You know I mean, so that... But look, I'll, 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 I've been trying to get people to come with me just because it's probably safer. No, totally. When, when you're out that far away. Totally. But everybody's like, man, what? That's too far, dude. And I'm like, yeah. Because how far is it to Reno? It's like eight hours. Is it? Yeah. And so. it's 150 miles north, so it's like 10 hours, you know, 10 and a half yeah, hours. Yeah, it's a whole day of driving and then yeah. sleep and then wake up the next day and then you're like, all right, let's go to the site. Yeah, it's gnarly. Like, I, I actually follow this girl on Instagram and she, she was working for like a production company. Mm -hmm. And it was like... They did like some kind of, uh, like they did some kind of like a, I don't know if it was like a Discovery Channel type thing, but she was out there with a the crew and they went out there in the winter time, which is kind of sketchy because uh, it's, it's really remote and it's wet. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Northern Nevada and they had like a fucking crazy time. Like it was just muddy and wet and cold. I want to go there during the summer, <laughs> which is probably just as bad because it gets yeah. cold as fuck up there. And yeah, it's up by Lake Tahoe and stuff. Yeah, it gets cold in the night, and it's pretty hot during the day, you know what I mean? And you probably don't have any reception out there either, so. Yeah. Dude. That would be scary. Yeah, it'd be fun, though. Oh, yeah. Now, we want to do the same thing. That was one of the reasons we were, like, so apt to get the solar panel and the battery and get the whole setup going, because um, we want to go shoot some nature stuff or, like, um, you know, like, adventure documentary style shit and so we have the gopros to put on everyone's heads and um go we're going um Who you, mountain climbing and like rappelling and shit like that and yeah i just started can canyoneering last summer with yeah this, with this with the friend that i was hanging out with a lot and uh that was really fun have you ever done that before what's canyoneering yeah it's insane like um i i remember when i first heard about it like there she was telling me with like I was like, that doesn't sound fun. That sounds crazy. Basically, they, they repel into slot canyons. Okay. And then you hike out. Cool. That's it. But, I mean, it gets pretty intricate. Like, you know, they do some crazy shit. Awesome. I did, uh, last year I did Subway. So that was the first time I ever done it. And Subway is like one of those really, really beautiful hikes in Zion, you know. Um, but then I got to do a bunch of other stuff, like more advanced stuff, because I was going with her and her friends. It was pretty fucking cool, though, man. That's awesome. It's it's a little sketchy. Like, of course. You, you have to, like, know uh, to be safe, how to be safe, you know? I don't I don't know enough about it to, like, feel confident to go. And I went with somebody that has more experience, but it's super fun. It's, like, a, it's a definite, like, it's a really cool way to, like, experience, like, Zion, you know what I mean? Because you're going down salt canyons that most people don't get to go to, and, like, they only allow a certain amount of people a, a day to even visit these, like, these salt canyons. So it was pretty interesting stuff. So how does that work? Do you have to get on like a list or anything like that or reserve so you, a spot? So you have to go through Zion. I actually got my quick pass. Like you can sign up for a quick pass. You pay like 15 bucks. They make you watch a video and then you can just go online and then you, you could actually reserve it months in advance or you could do like a last minute um, raffle for it. Oh, tight. Like, so like, you know, like let's say you want to go and hit Subway this Sunday. You could, you know, like I think they... You sign up for it. I forget how many days of, uh, beforehand, you know, you sign up for it, and then you wait, and then they tell you, like, I don't know, like two or three days before if you got it or not. And then you just, you know, you could either go to the office and pick it up. Um, you don't necessarily have to physically have it, but, I mean, they say that you should. Uh, yeah. Or you could just print it out if you have a quick pass, and then you just go and do it. That's awesome. It's, it's pretty interesting stuff. Like, I don't know. I haven't done any of it this summer, but last year I did a bunch of it. I got to do some of the most advanced canyons in the fucking Zion. It was insane. Oh, dude, that's tight. Like 150 foot repel at exit. It was gnarly. Yeah, it's hot this summer. Yeah. It's, it, it's hard to go out and do anything in this kind dude, of heat. Dude, these slot canyons, like, are, some of them are filled with water. You have to bring a wetsuit. Oh, wow. Because it's fucking cold and shit. Like, it's it's crazy. Like I want to do shit like that. Yeah, it's super fun. Like, I want to learn more about it so I can you know, go out and do it, you know what I mean? But yeah. we usually have to have, like, a team, you know what I mean? If some of these places have, like, they're pretty technical and shit, so you have to have, like, four or five people. Yeah. You know, because there's, like, you're propelling it to, like, a pothole, and you have to, like, climb out, you know what I mean? Dude, you got to let me know when you're going to do that again. If you're going to do it, I want to go, man. Yeah. I'll bring a bunch of waterproof cameras. Yeah, but we need to, uh, we need to like, you have to get a harness yeah, get and it. a repel device, and uh, Subway would be a cool, like, 
in yeah. what I think I feel confident enough to do that. Yeah, you did, did it before, right? I so did it like I think I did it like two or three times last summer. Okay, like two weeks in a row, I got tickets. Like they, I just won them. Like it was cool. Oh, nice. Yeah, like I, I like put in, put put in for them, and they gave them to me. I was like, what? It was it was like the first time too. It was dope. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we're gearing up to do our uh, repelling episode pretty soon. Where are you gonna go? I have no idea. My buddy's gonna take me out. He does it all the time, and we're just gonna take a bunch of camera equipment out, and we're gonna shoot a little uh, video, and I'll try to trim it down to like ten minutes. Dude, let me know. I'll bring my drone or something. Yeah, that'd be tight. I will let you know. Yeah, depending on where you go, I might be able to bring a drone. Yeah, because like so, you know, some of them like usually if you're repelling into something, it's probably pretty. It's probably like a slot canyon. So yeah, it's, it's out there. So it's like, well, but like there's probably walls and shit, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. But I'm down to try to fly. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be, be fun, man. That'd be a cool video. That'd be a cool, cool footage, man. Yeah, I'm going to go out with my buddy. He's going to just school me because I've never done it before. So I really want to do like um, a training kind of thing with the video where he's like explaining it to me and we capture that whole section of it. And then we jump down the cliff and, you know, so like the first Dude. half will be you can learn and be like, oh, I could go do that. Like if you're watching the video, yeah. kind of be like that's not that hard i can i can learn how to do this and then, yeah go do it i think there's one i think i think i was like my friend was telling me that there was this one in red rock that's like a really popular uh site where people practice oh, okay because it's like close it's an open wall and i mean they have anchors already so you can just anchor to that and then just rappel down oh nice I know, i'm sure your, your friend probably knows about it he probably does he's yeah. he goes all up and down this yeah. place so yeah, it's I'm excited about it. We're gonna do that, and uh, and then my buddy's gonna throw me out of a plane. Like you know, once all this kind of cools out, and we can go back to where he flies, and they all do you know they do skydiving and everything. Um, so that'll be a fun episode. I've never been skydiving either, That's and crazy. I'm afraid of heights. So That's I'm gonna be in the plane, and we're like, "You ready?" And we're like, "No!" And then we're gonna jump out of a plane anyways. And I don't know. I don't know if I could do skydiving. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where's your uh, next trip? You said you were... Oh, uh, probably Utah. Probably going to go up to Kolob. Kolob, re- yeah, 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 yeah. I really like it up there. I've that never... big lake on the top of a mountain, it's like a reservoir. Oh, Kolob Reservoir. That's yeah. yeah, that's right by Zion. Yeah, it's like it's like uh, everything is Zion except for this little corner yeah. section that's Kolob. Yeah. And you can go right up the mountain for free. You don't yeah. need any, you know, and so we go we go stay up on Kolob and chill. Yeah, that, that's a dope spot. I've, I've yeah. stayed there before. It's great. Yeah, like did you, uh, where's the campsite that's right there? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that's uh, the. It's just like it just circles around yeah. the reservoir. You can there's like spots well, that are kind well, no, of there's available. A, <clears throat> there's another campsite that's on the. Oh, like an actual campground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like uh, I've stayed there before. I forget what it's called. It's like because um, so the reservoir's right here. It's before you get to the reservoir. If you're going up, yeah, like, like through Hurricane, you know what I mean. If you're going up, you you would it'd be on your right. But it's like a little tiny campground. Uh. I think it's free too. A lot of them are, or or they want like a small donation, you know, maybe like yeah. It was you know. it was it was a dope little spot because like you know if you're going to Zion, there's you know never any nothing's uh, available. Yeah, nothing's available. There's a couple like you know dispersed camping areas, but that one is a little further away. But it's fucking nice, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's like nice and isolated, and it's pretty chill. That's yeah. awesome, man. Uh, yeah, like. The- it's so beautiful when you go there too. Like everything kind of shifts a little bit. All the rocks get redder. All the grass gets. It turns this. I don't know, like sea foam green color. It's not quite the greens that we're used to seeing out here. It's it's this. It's it, it's just beautiful. It has more of a hint of blue to it, or like a turquoisey thing. Yeah, I was just uh, in the mountains in Beaver, Utah. Like yeah. Last weekend, uh, dude, it's so badass out there. It was, uh, I don't know, if you know where Beaver is? I, I, I know about... It's the, past, it's past uh, Parowan, so it's past, okay. like, you know, it's a little further we, away. It's about, we've been to Parowan. Yeah, it's like 200 miles from here. Okay. But up there, they have a ski resort called Eagle Point. I go there all the time, and I was on the other side of the mountain up there, and, like, there's, like, all these little mountain ranges out there that are, like, super dope. Like, there's, like, i probably seen, like, seven or eight lakes, little tiny, like, glacier lakes. <sighs> beautiful and there's like campgrounds all over the place there was a lot of people up there when we went to and it was like a thursday but it's dope it's really nice i mean it was like 40 degrees 50 degrees at night oh wow yeah it got pretty cool. i think last week um they were getting like a little bit of precipitation so it was a little wet 
Mm-hmm. But it was nice and cool. Like I'm into some rain in the middle of summer, man. It's 117 degrees out here and shit. Oh man, it was so, it's so nice. hot. <laughs> it was so nice up there. It was dope. Yeah. People were driving out there in cars too. Like like the road's pretty pretty easy. Yeah. So it's a dope little spot. I want to go explore more in the next couple months, hopefully. Yeah, we're definitely gonna go hit it soon. Um, after I got one more, I got one more podcast tomorrow, and then uh, <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna pack it up and and go figure out something to shoot and shoot some yoga stuff and shoot some meditation stuff and get a bunch of time lapses. And you guys should try to shoot during the new moon. Yeah, because that's the darkest time of the of the uh, of the month, and you can get some cool star shots of the, the Milky Way and stuff. Yeah, when the moon's on the other side of the planet, it's not blasting the sky with light pollution yeah 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 exactly yeah that's exactly what we were thinking too um go out because we got the full moon coming up pretty soon yeah so it's this, this it's like the third week. Yeah. yeah and uh i love the moon so i'm always i'm following it no moon i'm like the opposite i mean i don't get me wrong i love the moon the moon's great but i've been following the new moon for like a few years now i'm always like oh i know when the new moon is time to go shoot some stars yeah yeah i'm just like i just like going out in the middle of nowhere yeah. Yeah, like this last summer was the first time I ever actually went anywhere alone. And like uh, it was pretty isolated. It was I thought I was gonna be more scared than I was. It was pretty it was pretty chill. Uh, you know, as long as you bring something to protect yourself with, you'd be okay. I out didn't there. have anything. I would have been fucking freaking out if I didn't have a weapon out there. Man. I, had a, a, I had a machete. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. It was crazy too. I was really close to area fifty one. That was like probably like a hundred not even a hundred yards from a sign that says Please keep out government property. Oh, really? Yeah, it was crazy. That's fantastic. I love that. It was dope. Yeah. I've driven by it once or twice where the Area 51 is just off the highway there. It's like over. Well, but they have like a huge, it's like a huge area. So like there's, you'll be out in the middle of nowhere and there'll be just a fucking line that says that like, don't cross this line. It's not even a fence. Well, there's like a little tiny fence. You know what I mean? Okay. (laughs) You can literally go over it if you wanted to, but it's like. Probably not a good idea. Yeah, it's not a good idea. I think they have like some weird shit out there that'll detect somebody crossing it or whatever. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, why wouldn't they? They got so much killer technology now. Yeah. It's, it's, it's weird. It it was really cool though. It was like a, it was pretty cool experience being out there because it's like, you know that there's not a lot of people around. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's pretty desolate. That was cool. I should take uh, I should take my pops camping out there somewhere and take some pictures of some stars and shit. He's always, he's so into UFOs. Oh, dude, yeah. He, I remember uh, I was out shooting at this abandoned gas station a few years ago, and it's past Beatty. Okay. It's like right before Goldfield or Gold Point. And I, I didn't realize that we're on the other side of that, uh, the military base by Indian Springs. What is that called? Screech or something. I don't know. There's like a, there's like an Air Force base out there. I can look it up though. Yeah. So that's where they fly the drones out of. People go and train to fly drones out there. That's the drone fucking whatever. Oh, my buddy just got his drone license. But like Cre- oh, C-R-E-E-C-H, Creech Air Force Base. Yeah, it's right outside of uh, Indian Springs, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so if you ever drive past that place and uh, you look and if there's something flying, it's a big-ass fucking military drone. Oh, yeah, look at the first thing that pops up yeah. is a picture of a big-ass military drone. Yeah, that's it. So, like, that's where, I think that's where they train. Like, and I think the people that are flying the drones and wherever across yeah. the world fly out of there. Oh, yeah. cool. So anyway, so I'm shooting at this abandoned gas station, right? And like, we're just sitting out there. It's like fucking middle of nowhere. It's, it's kind of close to the highway. And then we see these fucking lights come in and then they would like disappear. And we're like, what the fuck? Like we're all <laughs> freaking out. Like, what is that? Like, and then I realized, I was like, oh shit, we're on the other side of the mountain the other side of the mountain range that where Screech is at. So there's probably, they're probably just doing like, you know, like a, like a flight path, you know? Yeah. And like, they're, they're like drones. So they, they don't fly like regular airplanes. I think they like, you know, they're more, I don't know. It was, it freaked us out for a second. (laughs) Like in the middle of nowhere, like all paranoid and shit. It was interesting. Uh, I was taking my, uh, my pops through Death Valley, uh, and we had a big truck full of something, I don't remember, moving somebody, and he's just like, fingers crossed that on our way through uh, the desert here, we see some UFOs, and it just happened to be that Elon Musk was launching some rockets that oh, night, dude. and it looked amazing. It, it hit the setting sun, like the, wow. the gas is coming out of the back of the engine, uh, or the back of the rocket, I should say. 
um, they were like, they were reflecting off the sun setting and it was just this rainbow spectacular just shooting up into the sky. It came right over, the, right out of the mountains. Where were you guys at? Uh, we were, you know, we're driving through the middle of the desert, like, uh, California coming to Vegas, kind of Death Valley-ish. Okay. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it was, I was like, pop, look at that shit. You wanted a UFO. I was like, I have no idea what that is. And we had to look it up later, but I was snapping pictures of it the whole time. It's fucking badass. (laughs) Yeah. That's future, man. You never know what's up in the air anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I go out and look at the stars all the time. It's, it's fun. Yeah. You always see some weird shit though, too. Oh yeah. I like the um, the little. There's like a dot. It's like smaller than the freaking stars, and it's just hauling ass. Oh yeah. Through space up there, man. And there's it's a lot like of those. satellite or there's is a bunch the of space them. station. That's yeah, up there. the space station. Yeah, one yeah. of my buddies is always like, "Hey, did you go and see the the the, uh, the space station?" Like he like follows it, you know. Yeah. Like he knows when it's gonna come by. Like, I, it might be that. I don't know. Well, there's like a bunch of them. Like, I mean, there's like, yeah. there's a bunch of satellites up there. You know what I mean? And you can just see them with your naked eye, too. Yeah, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah. When, especially when you're way up on a mountain yeah. and, and there's like nothing up there. And yeah. oh, man, you're just like, oh, look at that. That is moving. That should trips me out. Yeah. Dude, like, you got to let me know about those yoga things you're talking about. That'd be fun. Yeah, definitely, man. Definitely. Uh, like, uh, you want to, you want to see him or you want to come up with me and go shoot? I'm down to go out and shoot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but yeah, check yeah. him out. Whatever. Yeah. I'll let, yeah. I'll let you know. Definitely, man. Um, but yeah, there, it's going to be a good time. Uh, I've been doing yoga for a really long time and it's just going to be some beginner stuff. Like I'm not going to try to show off or anything like that. I'm actually kind of making a fool of myself. I got some clothes off of Etsy that are like, you know, the yogi kind of clothes. They're really hippie kind of stuff. And, uh, it'll look good in the nature, I, I hope, or whatever. But it'll look better than my gym clothes that I normally do yoga in. But it's just stretching, you know? Yeah, it's yeah. stretching and breathing, I mean, and it's just good for you. I love yoga. I haven't done it in, like, fucking six months probably, but I love it. It's Yeah. It, yeah. It's, I, I think it's uh, one of my favorite ways of, you know, exercising. It is, dude. It's, I, it's my favorite way of exercising. Any days that I'm just like, like today I was like, I don't really feel like like I'll get down in here, even though like this is like the most open space I still have in my house is is this chaos that I've set up around me. But uh, um, some days I'm just like, man, I don't feel like you know, because I gotta like set up a pull up bar in the garage over there, and then walk through the curtains, and then come here and do push ups, <laughs> that that kind of bullshit. Yeah. So I just did do yoga like a couple times a week whenever this is up on the days I'm kind of feeling lazy. And by the end of yoga, you're you're like, I just kicked my own ass. That was. That was not an easy thing to accomplish. Yeah, I like I like going to classes just because doing them at home. I'm not I'm not that experienced. Yeah. So it's it's I like going to the class because then it kind of pushes you to do, you know, it pushes you to like try to do better. And then they, they also have somebody that can instruct you if they're, you know, if they see you doing something wrong because like you could you know you could potentially like you know you stretch the wrong way or yeah or, or trying to push it too hard and like you're doing it the wrong way and it'll fuck you up you know but, yeah i mean i usually it's usually never that bad but it's always nice to have somebody with a little bit of guidance you know that's what i like you know and that's and i think a lot of people are looking for that and so i'm just trying to put something out that's not um that's not like over like i love my my p90x yogas i love that shit um and uh it, but it's so intense and he's like you know they're 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 telling you what to do the whole time and it's this complex you know stuff and it's just like i just want to give people some easy stretches it's like some deep breathing some vinyasas some maybe some balanced postures and then some sit on your butt and stretch your legs and your back you know that kind of stuff yeah, just yeah. it's something that's uh, and it'll be peaceful and like not a bunch of people yelling at you and barking orders and telling you instructions and shit but i'm also going to include a second video like beforehand like hey these next set it's a videos that are coming up here's the moves this is what i'm gonna this is how you do the move properly you know and it'll just be like shot here or something in my house uh and then uh but then you can just watch the actual videos but that's just if you're like un unaware of how to you know when i say go into crescent pose it's like hey your heel should be up not flat that's warrior right and it's like that needs to be explained at some point but i don't want to be doing it through the whole fucking video yeah yeah dude I have a couple of locations that would be dope for that stuff. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I, really I mean, I guess I guess you probably want something close, but like these places I don't care. this place would be fucking epic. It would be super rad. Well, it's it's a lifestyle thing, right? Yeah. So like um the reason we're doing it is um I've been asked to do it 
right? Like people are like, oh, you like the, I've been wanting to do yoga and I just don't know. And I'm like, man, I'll put some shit on my YouTube, check my shit out. You can watch it. You know what? But then other people, if I just tag it with yoga, right. And it's an actual yoga video. That's good. That'll spread through YouTube yeah, as well. Yeah. Just on its own. You so know, it might make me some money, which would be nice. Yeah. Like I was, um, cause like I, I was traveling with, with, uh, with a friend, um, she wasn't really into yoga, but yeah. one of the things that I was thinking about doing, cause like I have like my car rigged. So I have like a tent and I got all like, you know, I could put all my stuff like, you know, camping stove, whatever, like I need yeah. to be out in the middle of nowhere and be, just be like legit, you know, like have everything I need. Um, but what I want, one of the things that I was thinking about doing is building like a platform where I could put a yoga mat on. That's what we were talking about too. Dude. It's like, it, like I was trying to figure out, I was like, what, what can I do? Like, how can I put it? Where am I going to get it? You know what I mean? Like yeah. I was thinking of the logistics, like where am I going to mount it to my car? You know what I mean? Like we were talking about making smaller sections of the platform and then, it together. And then when you get to the spot, you can just put it together yeah. and take like a clamp and clamp yeah. it in the middle and smack your mat over it. So That's I was, I was possibly going to do like some four by fours. I'm pretty sure I can, f I got to measure the, yeah, the back size of the, of the truck mat, and the size of the mat. Um, but I'm pretty sure i can take two four by fours and shove them in there and the mat's six feet so it'll it'll have you know uh, an extra foot on either side front yeah. or back of the mat yeah see i was thinking uh, you know what i don't even know if it'll fit but i was thinking about because uh, like i build a platform in the back of my car because like yeah. i realized after about a year of my car i didn't never i never used the, the back seats so i built like a storage platform mm -hmm. you know what i mean so it's like a little bit raised and has like a cubby holes so i could just put a bunch of stuff in there that i need you know what i mean like Things that I always bring up, tools, you know, air compressor, stove, you know, cooking stuff, whatever. Yeah. So, but I was thinking, it's like, maybe I could just put it on top of that because it's flat on top. You know what I mean? I don't know. You just build it, you know, you build it custom for for the system that you're yeah. working with. You know, you know it's just I, a little bit of lumber. No, it's funny because like. some feet. Yeah, it's funny because like, I was just, I was thinking about that like about a year ago. I was like, man, it'd be cool to bring a yoga mat. And like fucking something flat, you know, because yeah. usually you're not gonna have a flat surface, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's not flat usually. And but um, what we do is lay out um, like a just a Persian rug, just cheap Persian rug out there, and and throw the yoga mat on top of that um, to kind of get like a space, a clearing to where I can come off the mat and I'm not like in pine cones and shit. Yeah, you know, but you a, could, a platform was definitely op uh, ideal. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. And then you know what you could do if you have a platform and it's not level ground. You can use sandbags. Yeah. To just like put underneath so it like gives it a little bit of stability and it, it'll mold to the ground. Well, I, I found, um, I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you. Uh, I'll send you a link or something. I found on, I think, homedepot.com, they have little feet that you can attach around oh, it. Yeah. And you can just adjust like a little cranker. Oh, that's cool. So that one needs to be a little longer and then you can flatten the whole thing out with mm. a level. Um, so that was really our game plan. It was just like, oh, you know, it's. It'll probably be like a couple hundred bucks when it's all said and done and, um, you know, just a day or two of my time. It'll probably take a day to build it, honestly. I get knocked around pretty good with the yeah. you know, the skill saw. Yeah, that's <laughs> not hard. I, yeah. I'm like, now I'm like, you got me thinking about it. Because that'd be nice to just be out in the middle of nowhere and being able to just like, you know, lay on something flat. It isn't, it, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's nice to just lay on my yoga mat but an actual flat surface that's been leveled out would be dope yeah yeah it'd be super rad especially out there you know you could do some yoga in the middle of nowhere that'd be so rad yeah we we just find the we find the flattest spot and we clear that shit out and throw the rug on top of it and um so you've already done it yeah i did um i have a i have a test video so we went out and did um a couple shots and we shot like um we tried to shoot you know multiples but like a couple of them we were the first couple we were like oh maybe we'll have something useful and then like the third time we did it we were like oh we got this fucker you know like yeah. it's it's working now and so we took it home we edited it and then i started working on the voiceover and i got through the voiceover and they were like let's make music for this and then of course i'm neurotic as shit so i had to go to the enchanted forest and get a bunch of tibetan bowls and chimes and flutes and like different thingies to make really nice peaceful yoga music Wh where'd you go uh, Enchanted Forest. No, I mean... Out here. Uh, oh, uh, we, that was... We went up to... Um, uh, it was my buddy spot, so I'm not familiar with the name. But it was out in Arizona oh, um, okay. near the Behringer Crater. It was like... F we oh. had to go 45 minutes further to get to the Behringer Crater. Meteor, oh. Meteor Crater. That's dope. So you guys were out in the middle of nowhere. It was the middle of nowhere. That's fucking cool. And we drove uh, 25 miles deep into the woods. Nice. And um, I just not... I was not 
aware we were driving that deep in the woods and it was it was beautiful man that's cool. it's just trees and we stayed on a cliff so he's like you got to drive this deep because this is where the cliff is and if you want badass time lapses you want them off this cliff yeah yeah and you know it was totally worth it man um and i'll, I'll, I'll have to fucking yeah I'll yeah, take you out yeah. There show dude you. there's a lot of really cool shit in arizona i was wanting to hit like uh but i didn't get a chance to because there's a fire out there i guess no. uh, of course where. summertime there was a fire out there. anyways like yeah so i was part of these four by four groups and this guy was planning a trip out there it looked really cool but they ended up changing it because the fire. fire but there's some really really dope locations like that where it's like you're sitting on the ledge you know overlooking a pretty rad stuff it's amazing it's amazing what you can wake up to every morning if you're out in the middle of nowhere yeah yeah and that's the that's a big thing for me right like I'm, I'm i'm down to do the yoga videos and, and pump out content right i mean that's the idea of having a youtube channel but at the same time we're like we're really trying to establish this lifestyle where if we can get this thing to monetize and we're monetizing it because we're going out camping yeah, and yeah. doing yoga you know it's like well we're gonna go out and stay for like three nights maybe and you know two days we'll be out there fucking doing yoga and then the rest of the time it's like time lapses and pictures and like unwind you're out you drove all the way out here camp for a night yeah right? i think there's a couple of people that are doing that like i think but i don't know how they do it it's yeah. It seems like it'd be super fun. It is super fun, dude. Like when we went on to the test stuff, it was like, I was just like, is this really what we're doing? We're working right now. Are we working today? We're working today. That's this right. is the best job ever. Yeah. And I mean, I see other people's stuff on, on the YouTube doing pretty well. So it's like, it's patience and time. You know, I mean, your first year, you're probably not gonna make anything on one of these YouTube channels. And then the second year probably make very little, but it'll grow it keeps growing and then eventually you're just like fuck i don't think i need the job thing because this is paying my bills yeah yeah um, and that's like that's the goal and i see other people doing it that's how i became an audio engineer you know i looked at those big giant consoles mm -hmm. and i was like all these racks and stuff and it's just like how does he know all this shit and it's like it doesn't matter if he can figure it out i figure it out and i'm going to figure it out and i'm going to do it and i was successful at that and i was successful at learning all these crazy bass lines so i i'm going to be successful at this youtube thing I'm Dope. getting a check from fucking YouTube. That's for sure. That's the that's the bottom line for me, right? It's like even if it's for a nickel, yeah. I'm not stopping till I get that check for a nickel. Because why? Why attempt to do it if I'm not going to see it all the way through to the end, right? Yeah, for sure. But so many people make great money. Yeah, it's pretty insane. Like I don't even know how it works, but it seems crazy. It's just all about how much you can, how much you can get people to stay on your video. So the longer they watch your video the more money you make basically uh it's not about um like it is about like oh yeah like a million people clicked yeah. on the video but they want longevity in the watch time okay. and uh and honestly like i mean most people watch like the first 10 minutes of these things some people are watching them all the way through the end but like my average is like 10 minutes which i'm stoked on because if i was putting out 30 second videos then they might not even watch the whole 30 second video yeah that's true um and uh yeah so these these long form podcasts are just a great way to consistently dump another um video out every single monday without fail it's just like no it's going to be there you know we're we're weeks ahead of schedule and we stay that way so that we don't miss a single monday we never will consistency is like the second you're not consistent they're yeah. like oh this guy's half-assing it you know he's not so, gonna he's not gonna he's not gonna be there for me when i need a podcast how many how many uh podcasts have you done this is my 23rd one. Oh wow yeah 23 since march um and i think we started maybe into march so maybe like say 23 since it's, it's every monday so tw 23 weeks dude how much or uh, how 20 weeks how much space do you need for archives <laughs> archives are about um 10 gigabytes okay. ultimately once oh, i once i once you compress them once i compress it down yeah. to an mp2 file okay. um so it's like the video and then i have an mp3 file and um and so like the video i sh i get down to 1080p 25 frames a second and then uh because youtube likes that and then i go with the um audio at 256 kilobytes a second and i bounce those two files down we get an 
Instagram video, which I was like, I was having issues with Instagram because social media is like king of advertising and marketing these days, especially if your stuff is on the internet. It's like, click my link, please. And Instagram's really a dick about that. Like they don't want you to have a link oh, another, clickable. To another platform. To another platform yeah. on Instagram. You can't like put your YouTube link there. No way, shape or form, right? Really? I thought people were putting like fucking OnlyFans fucking links and shit. You know what I mean? I, I don't know how, uh, <laughs> like they're really stubborn about letting you get away with that kind yeah. of stuff. Like it, it's really, um, I can put my YouTube shit on there, right? Yeah. But it's like, it wants me to import it as Instagram TV file, right? So oh, yeah, yeah, now yeah, we're yeah. converting down to like H.264. And um, and so, I mean, the whole process of figuring this fucking, like this chunk out, right? And then we need, so we need that H.264 file for Instagram. And then we need a square uh, JPEG uh, that's a specific size. It can't be too big, yeah. can't be too small um, for the Podbean. And then the YouTube needs a thumbnail as well that I have to like Photoshop words over so like people will click on it. What's, what's a Podbean? Podbean's the format, or so, sorry, Podbean's the um, the service that hosts my podcast. Oh, okay. And the audio, and just the audio format. Okay. So anytime you like go on, say like the Apple Podcast, Spotify, any of these popular um, podcast platforms. Mm -hmm. Uh, I believe they might be able to host. I don't know, um, but normal uh, like you get a you get a hosting service, and then the hosting service routes it to Apple. Oh, okay. Um, and which is one of the things where we actually we we've been having an issue with our image not being big enough for Apple, but it needs to be small enough for Podbean, and it's like this balancing we're finding the right size and, and and we save our export session you know this is how we're exporting things and then after you finally find your groove you're like okay we just have it saved it's a template give me another one of those you know we throw the we throw the media we have into the fucking template maker and click 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 cut 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 bam and it's like finally is working yeah that shit is confusing to me like uh like my buddy he's a film guy and uh he's always trying to like Cause I like I'll do stuff for him sometimes, you know. He's like, dude, you gotta shoot at twenty four frames per second. It's more cinematic. Yeah, that's and the. I'm, and I'm like, uh, okay. Like I mean, I'm, you know what I mean? Like I'm just so oblivious to it, you know. Yeah, if you're filming, like if I'm gonna, yeah. like I'm, I'm writing a, um, I'm writing a, a stupid movie right now. Um, <laughs> a stupid movie? What? Yeah, it's gonna be like B horror movie uh, shit, right? Uh, so awesome. it'll be, I, uh, a, it'll be cheap to make, yeah. right? Because it's like I'm not shooting for the stars. This is gonna be hokey yeah. right so like even if the camera's shots aren't that great it's like who gives a shit this is a b movie right uh no there's no budget um but uh it gives me a chance to like really experiment and and play with like different concepts and also special effects like i really want to do over the top gore like anime style kill bill like there's not that much blood in a yeah. human being, bro. That kind of <laughs> shit, you know? And uh, uh, so I'm, I'm trying to, we're learning all these techniques as well. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. It's, he's a big stickler for that. He's always giving me shit about that stuff. He's yeah. Like, Dude, come on, man. So even though, yeah, shooting 24 for a movie, do you yeah. definitely shoot for yeah, 24 it, for and a then, movie? And then, it's like, you said 25, what is good for YouTube? YouTube likes it at 25. So weird. You can do, um, so. Yeah, that's just like what it recommended to me, like the most functional. So, yeah. even, so even though like my, my, uh, let's go to this one, my switcher is it's you know it's not a fucking state of the art switcher or anything, man. I'm not rich. Uh, it does 1080p by 30 frames a second. It can do a bunch of other stuff too, you know what I mean? But like the, all the cameras like it. Everything kind of finds it, and then I just have to when I'm rendering and compressing everything from a dot move file into an MPEG two file, I just tell it, hey man. 25 frames a second because YouTube likes it and personally I mean I can kind of tell like when I do that and I fucking and it, it cuts five frames out every second it's like this it's not bad but it's not great you know but it's like these aren't the 4k cameras weird you know? I don't, so, yeah it's confusing <laughs> it's all like it's all a give and take yeah. man like by the time i'm done like i was saying um when we're when we're recording out of the switcher into the hard drive on the computer it's it's recording like seven gigabytes a minute uh, which is just massive files yeah that's insane and so i always end up with like a 900 almost a terabyte file at the end of every single one of these that has to be smashed down to a dot move file that's around under 10 why wouldn't you just uh, record on a different format 
Um, be optional. Uh, basically, it's the options available with the capture card and the software we're using to capture with. Oh. Uh, um, I was trying to. I was trying to use um, some other stuff that I'd used in the past, but it wasn't really syncing up to it. And then the capture card software really just it clicked, and, and it was like, "Hey, I work." And so we're like, cool, you work. Uh, you push record, and I'm like, Jesus, look at my hard drive just getting eaten alive. And I'm yeah. like, what are these formats? Yeah. And then you go through, and you're like, well, let's try a different one. And it's like twice as big. Jeez. And you're like, ooh. Uh, so I had, to, I had to do a process of uh, elimination where I would record 60 seconds. I'd sit there and watch the 60 and try to get as close to 60 as I could. Oh, just 60 seconds of the same frame being shot. Um, and then I would stop right there right there's 60 seconds of that format and then i i have a list next to me and then the file names on the computer and i do every single file format the computer can do at 60 seconds and then i go that one's pretty small damn <laughs> and then i call my video buddies like after i do the i get all my information i call my video engineering buddies and they're like yeah do the uh, i think it's yuv um uh files that i'm recording but it ends up being, it's, it's a dot move like quick time but yeah. it's uncompressed completely uncompressed so it's massive yeah. just freaking massive um and like the the bits matter like how many bits yeah, you're recording yeah. at um determine um how big the file ends up being as well so yeah so it's just it so i record so it's like from the 1080p camera into the switcher into the computer compress into the video editing system compress and then upload to youtube compress so it's like by the time it gets from that camera to fucking youtube it is annihilated but that's the game that we play right it's, it's like putting it through a cheese tread, like a cheese grater yeah <laughs> it's in, it's crazy and so um it's so weird yeah that you, that you have to file like you, have, you end up with such a big file and then it gets you know yeah because adobe's not interested in working with a Really? freaking 900 gigabyte file oh yeah yeah i didn't even think about that yeah it's just like uh i mean it can but it's not fucking stoked about it at all it's Takes just a like, long time yeah it's just so massive and like anytime i'm going to click along uh along the timeline or do any kind of edits or anything like that i mean i could i could give it a shot but uh it's it, it just is going to cut time out of the process and like Adobe was really having an issue with it. It really didn't like playing that. Nothing likes playing like a computer does not like playing a 900 gigabyte yeah, yeah. file back. Um, it's just like, what the fuck did you just ask me to do? Uh, so it'll it lags, and it's like, man, look at how good that looks. That one frame yeah. as it lags when the computer's trying to play this monster. But uh, I mean, I got a decent I, 1050 graphics card and an i5k processor you know i'm running like 3.66 quad core damn so i mean it's a pretty powerful computer it's, what do i got in there is it 64 or 32 gigs of ram a shit ton of ram so i mean it can handle a lot but at the same time it's like i mean i could build a better computer to if i wanted to run that shit i'm sure my video buddies would be like you can run 900 gigabyte files on computers you just need a ten thousand dollar computer yeah. stop being <laughs> such a cheap ass yeah just needs 160 gigs of RAM. So. Yeah, just insane shit, you know. So, as the technology advances, though, that's the beauty of it, you know. The um, law of accelerating returns works in my benefit. I was showing you all those cool, like I was showing you the Weeble that yeah. I got, the cool stabilization for my camera system, and that was only a few hundred dollars. And uh, and that kind of technology used to be so uh, it's just out of your price range for the longest time, and then all of a sudden it gets down and down and down and down, and now you can afford really professional shit that used to be state of the art yeah, five yeah. years ago. Yeah, my buddy has a Cine controller that I use. USB yeah. Bar sometimes it's pretty insane because it's like a 360 degree slider. So like you just put your camera on it, you can program a move and do time lapses with it or do video with it. It's pretty interesting stuff. It's fairly inexpensive for what it is, but it's yeah. fucking expensive. You know oh, what I yeah. mean? I mean, it's dope though. Like it could do a lot of a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's not my little weeble upstairs. That this thing. Like, the that, next step up is like super expensive. That thing is pretty fucking cool though. It like, is. That's pretty fucking cool. Like I was like, dang, I was impressed. It looks like a like a smaller version of the Ronin. You know what I mean? That's what it is. It's yeah. totally what it is. Yeah. Like there's there's on, on YouTube there's comparison videos yeah. of that kind of stuff. 
Yeah, that's good stuff. Um, yeah. It's, Have you guys connected the camera to it yet? I haven't. Oh shit. I've been I've been focusing on that yeah. um the carbon slider. The slider. For the, yeah. yeah. So that took a second because you had to actually like build it. Oh yeah. And it's like they just sent you like the the fucking there's like a a rubber. Uh, chain that the teeth bite on the motor yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, or belt it's a belt Jason uh, <laughs> so the rubber belt and it's just rolled up in a coil and like you have to attach the motor and you have to attach the battery That's pack cool, and hook right? it all up onto the fucking thing so it came in pieces so by the time we got that done we were like oh my god and then it's time to set the podcast back up and that's the balancing act. We're always like, That's get back to the podcast, and then okay, get the side things going, side things going, side things going. I'm curious to see uh, that slider though. I want to check it out. Yeah, I'll, I'll fucking take you up to the studio. You guys see the whole studio upstairs too, man. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, I was an audio engineer. I know, but uh, <laughs> I'm now this guy. But so the studio upstairs is all. It's a big audio studio. It's for me to go record music and I, I brought my band's my buddy's band in and made their album and stuff like that oh, sweet and that's awesome yeah it's a nice little setup yeah i've started to mess around with a lot of analog synthesis stuff oh that's so fun yeah i did i'll have to bring something over one of these days yeah i got like a fucking i got you know what i got i got the behringer model d have you ever heard of it no so, so behringer started making um the reproducing old analog synthesis gear like yeah, it's. I mean, it's so it's super affordable. Is what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. It's like I love a little, Behringer. It's like a little toy. It's basically like a. It's a reproduction of a the Moog Model D. Oh really? Like the synth, the Mini Moog. You know? Yeah, oh, I know. Yeah, so it's like it's like a little rack mount. It's like tiny. It's like this big. It's like two. Was that on their um, Instagram? Might have been. I thought I saw a picture of that with a bunch of racks around it. Uh, maybe. Maybe for it. Maybe a long it. time ago. Uh, but yeah, so it's fucking cool. Like it's. And then I just realized that they came out with a new version of it that's polyphonic. So the original one they came out with is just like the Mini Moog, but it's monophonic. So, oh, really? So it only... Oh, no, that's... That's, uh, that's a different Moog thing? Dude, that is, you know, that is an actual Model D, and that is oh. inside the Moog Lab in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, I went there a few years ago. That shit you? was so fucking cool. I bet. Dude, if you look in the back, you see all those... Uh, that like, You can't really zoom in. But see all those racks? Those are all Voyagers. Oh really? Yeah, like those are all it's like one, two, three. There's probably like like on that one side, that's probably like six Voyagers. Then yeah, they have six like of them. and then they have like Mogafuggers, Mogafuggers, Mogafuggers. Yeah. Like if you look, those are all like I think there's like a bunch of Mogafuggers over mm, there. Yeah. And they basically you never seen Moglab or the Moglab concerts? No, I never watched them. Oh, it's so rad. So basically, they'll have like a band come in and they're like, all right, so here you go. Recreate a song just using Moog synths. So like all of the stuff that they use to make their, that song or like well, to recreate the song live in their studio, but they they can only use the Moog synths. So you know what I mean? Like they have to use like all the stuff, you know, that they have. Even for drums? Yeah. That's even, awesome. I love it. Do they do it? They, it's fucking do It's really cool. Like, you got to check it out. Like, they have a couple cool, cool bands, and they go in there, and they have all the fucking dope Moog shit, and they're, they reproduce, they reproduce songs like, just using Moog equipment. It's pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah, so I got to go into that little... I went to the Moog factory. I took my daughter there when she was really young. It Where was, is it? It's in Asheville, North, okay. North Carolina. That makes sense. Asheville, North Carolina is the dopest little city, man. It's cool as fuck. Sits in the mountains. It's fucking cool. It's like Portland. It's weird. Yeah. But it's in North Carolina. I almost moved there. To Asheville? Oh, to Nashville. No, well, not, 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 not North Carolina. Nashville, Tennessee. I'm, oh, I'm dumb. Nashville, Nashville's dope, man. Nashville's sometimes a, you hear what you want to hear. Yeah, Nashville's a really cool place. I've been there a bunch of times. You were saying Asheville. Asheville, yeah. Asheville, North Carolina. It's, okay. Uh, yeah, it's like about three hours away. Four okay. hours away. Something like that. I don't remember. But yeah, so... I got to go to the factory, like took the tour and they like, you know, they show you where they make all the Moog synthesizers and then they, like, I think that was one of the, like the last parts of the tour where they go, oh, this is the Moog lab and, you know, we have little concerts here and it's this little tiny room. It's probably about the size of your living room. Yeah. And they just have like fucking $150,000 worth of synths, <laughs> rack mounts and shit. Just like, it's just so rad. It's a little tiny studio. It was super cool. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, now I'm going to have to check that shit out. I'm interested in the, the Moog stuff, man. Yeah, they always make killer stuff. Yeah, dude, it's like the, the Behringer is pretty cool. It has, you know, it has like a, like a weird low-end bass and shit. And like, 
It's pretty gnarly. It's like a little tiny toy too. It's like so little. It's like ridiculously how powerful it is. Yeah. Like you got to be careful when you turn it on because it could blow shit because it's so loud. You know what I mean? Oh wow. Yeah, it's pretty rad. Yeah, Behringer makes great stuff. It's so convenient that they do their little thing. You know, this German company that has these Chinese warehouses, that are factories, I should say, that that build. They just buy up everyone's technology and they take their plans and they go, "Cool, we'll sell your company. We just wanted the plans." And they just send it to China, and they make it with Chinese parts. Wow. And it's like, it's close. Some of it's pretty it's good. It's close. Some of it's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I know I know that, you know, not all the products are amazing, but there's some pretty good shit. Dude, it's like uh, the, the newer stuff the newer that they're stuff making is, dope, is yeah. really quality. Yeah. So, I mean, they definitely have a reputation for their older shit being yeah. just garbage and breaking real easily. But I think they I think they spend a, like an extra penny on their components each and like got real stuff that works like yeah. it doesn't break i have shit like there's a behringer i've had this i've had this little behringer desk right here for i don't even know how long it was it was my little jam pad for when we're going to throw up some powered speakers and it's got a little reverb on it and we can throw four mics on it and yeah I, and I've, sing i've had a bunch of behringer stuff throughout the years like yeah. i mean like i don't think i ever actually broke anything yeah you know what i mean now that i think about it like i've i think i just you know like got rid of it or something yeah but, yeah, their new their new synth stuff, dude. You got to look it into it. It's pretty cool. Oh, I'm interested. It's I'm pretty, definitely it's interested. It's pretty affordable too. Like if you're mm. in, if you're into that stuff, it's pretty cool. Yeah, like I currently um, I have a um, I just have an M Audio uh, standard software controller yeah. keyboard, right? It's like weighted keys and everything, but it's basically it's just a MIDI controller for all the keywords I have in my computer system. Yeah, upstairs. I mean that's the way to go, really, man. It is. It you is. Mean? But it's nice to have toys. I am a huge, like, hardware person. Like, I don't know why. I'm not even, like, a musician. Yeah. But I have a bunch of shit. You can play the piano. You're a musician. Oh, man. I don't really know how to play, man. I just make noise. Yeah, that's what being yeah. a musician is. That's all we do, bro. <laughs> we just make noise. Yeah, I just have a bunch of shit. Like, I, I'll, like, buy shit. Like, I, I have to, like, stop myself now. I was like, oh, I can't can't no yeah I, I gotta can't stop buying i gotta stop buying stuff. sounds like a musician to me bro <laughs> sounds like every guitar player i've ever yeah. known a, dude got another new guitar from the pawn shop <laughs> it's like don't you have like seven guitars yeah. so i sold two of them to get this one and it's yeah. just like but you had two other guitars yeah but i got a new one now it's a different sound man yeah <laughs> It's a different uh, pickup configuration. I'm, uh, I'm going to customize it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. They love that shit. I'm the same way. I I wish I could buy new bases all the time, but I can't. I got all this technology to buy instead. Yeah. I need yeah. to focus on one addiction at a time. Yeah, I know, right? I'm, like, I'm a digital hoarder and a hoarder so i got two problems yeah like physically hoarding shit and then digitally hoarding stuff <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah you got some uh yeah cluttered hard drives yeah it's pretty bad i uh dude mm -hmm. i went and bought you can see them right there three uh eight terabyte hard drives dude i need some of that they are super cheap on amazon like they i was watching them forever they were like 350 bucks 350 bucks 350 then they dropped under 200 bucks and i was like buy them up and I took everything I had because I had like uh, 20, I think it was 20 terabytes of individual 2Ts, 4Ts, yeah, yeah. 1Ts. And I was just like, this is, rid I don't know where any of my yeah, shit is yeah. because it's on these 10, yeah. uh, the a dozen hard drives, whatever it ended up being. And uh, and three of them, I wasn't able to access. They were they were like old. I got I to gotta do the, the game of getting them to... A computer to bite yeah, them real quick again and then dump them the fuck on those eight terabytes and then reformat them um because yeah i want the rest of my stuff my movies collection like my, my collections collection where it's like uh all the harry potter movies all the jurassic parks right it's like the collection hard drive that one doesn't work and it's like it's got all the all this anime all that anime it's like fuck i want that one that was my yeah, good one. That's that's my problem. Like I need to I need to do that. I have like a couple computers that need to be cleaned out and shit. And oh like, yeah. That's why I need to get something like that. That's what I was working on actually, before this pandemic started. I was like, I need to fucking buy like a, a huge fucking hard drive, you know, like and just dump everything in there and organize it, and then just have like things to like mobile to take me with take yeah. with me. You know what I mean? And then dump stuff into you know. What's it called? Tonito. T O N I D O. 
Tonito's your own cloud service, and I believe it's free. It used to be free. Uh, it might it might not be free anymore because it's been quite a while since I, I messed with it. But um, but we had our own like all of our hard drives, so I just leave that computer on, and then I access it from my phone through Tonito, and I can like pull up anything. I like have a, a terabyte of music on there, and what? like That's so crazy. much video. Yeah, and it's just like here's your computer, bro. And here's all your files on it, and it'll play right through your phone. It's like your personal Netflix. What? That's so weird. How, I mean, they have to be charging for it. They're, I don't see how they wouldn't be charging. Maybe. They weren't charging for it when I was using it, but I was working at Vamp still, so that was at least six years ago. Oh, shit. And then I got I got a new computer system, and I got the new hard drives, and I never reinstalled it because I don't care yeah. that much. Like, it was cool when I did it originally, and I was like, check out the thing I did. And it's like, and then I never used it. You know, because I have actual Netflix, and they, they're, <laughs> but, uh. So, what's up with Vamps, dude? Is, are they not opening up again? Uh, I don't know. I don't mm. know what's going on with oh. them. They, uh, I thought they, uh, my buddy Donnie's a manager. I thought they were opening, oh. uh, and just, like, not having bands, but, like, serving maybe food. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, they look, it's. It's rough. It's really a shame because I don't think they, everybody really understands how hard it is to keep a club like that open. Oh, yeah. Uh, and fortunately, I mean, they have, you know, the, the Coker's taking care of it, and they're not going to let that club die because it's a personal thing to them. They love it, and they put a lot of love into it. So um, yeah, hopefully it's safe. I mean, it's a fantastic venue for everybody. But uh, a lot of the other venues around town are just fucked. They, um, I mean, these these live venues they run uh, on a shoestring budget yeah. and they not, cost so much to just power and like pay for the venue and all the licensing that you have to have to sell alcohol and and have live music and serve food all these things that just it stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks and then the equipment runs you know for eight hours a night or whatever it is and it's like now your power bill's fucking five grand and um and that's every month and it's just like one bad concert where they bring in a national and it's like they guarantee them their five thousand dollars or whatever and then they don't bring anybody but they still have to pay the guarantee and it's just like i can't pay the power bill now yeah yeah and that club will, <clears throat> that club will collapse on itself and they ha it happens all the time right yeah, like yeah. you know you, you clubs pop up and yeah, go I've away and they it. last for like maybe two three years yeah. and that's what happens right they can't uh, they can't. They their own weight crushes down on them because, uh, you know, they're only charging ten dollars at the door when they really should be charging fifteen or twenty because it's twenty twenty and the, you know, yeah, it's the it's, bills are not getting cheaper. They're getting more expensive, yeah. and everyone's like, I don't even want to pay ten bucks a ticket. And it's like, do you want live fucking entertainment or not? Because someone's got to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, I remember um, like when they started making all these venues. That's what I was like. Oh, it sucks. It's gonna yeah. make it really hard for. And anybody to stay alive because you're just spreading it out way too thin. You know what I mean? There was just too many venues. Everybody want, And then, like, they would buy out, like, like you know, like one year the band would play, like, a small venue downtown. Yeah. Next year they're playing a big-ass venue on the strip. And then, like, you, then the little venues can't compete with the big venues and the big venues can't fill it because they was too, that was too quick of a jump. You know what I mean? Big time. And that's happened, like, I saw it happen overnight. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. It kind of sucked. But it was, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, it's going to be um, <clears throat> it's going to be interesting uh, to see what happens with uh, live entertainment coming up. Because once they, it's going to be like, a, I feel like they're going to crack it. And then they're going to shut it back down again. And then yeah. they're going to crack it one more time. And then there's going to be, like, four people left with venues yeah. that can actually make a show happen. Because... Fucking the government just crushed everybody's hopes and dreams of ever owning a music video again, right? Because they just had to collapse. I mean, you know, I don't know if the clubs are going to stay open. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't see how these mega clubs would be able to survive. You know what I mean? No, they can't. You know what they I mean? They can't. It's just not going. It's not realistic. Yeah, you know, it'd be cool. Like if they just demolished all of them and made them back into like the lounge acts that they used to have back in the day yeah remember like you go to like any casino and you see a lounge act and you could go and see for free and sit down have a drink or whatever yeah and then they destroyed all those and they made bank clubs in the in where they were at you know well that's because people just want that vip yeah. i'm in the fucking i'm in the super special place yeah. kind of vibe 
where they come out here and they want to listen to that garbage music. And, and they want to spend as much money as possible. Yeah, rub shoulders with famous people who are paid $50,000 to be there. They're not there because they want to have fun. They're working. Yeah. And you're just too dumb to realize that this is all a game that people are doing to get you to pay $250 for a $10 bottle of Jack Daniels. Well, it's way more than that. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's probably so much more now. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I haven't been in the club scene in a while. but no, uh, I, I never, I don't think I ever was. I was just like, yeah. you know, I used to work it. Oh, nope. Yeah, I was never, I was never into going to that yeah. at all. Um, although I, I have been, right? Like, I mean, yeah, I'm in it. I'm and sure I know, I know sure. friends, and they invite me out. Hey, I go to table, and I'm like, okay, I'll show up, man, and hang out. If you got a table, yeah, yeah. you know, if you're gonna invite me to a thing, and I have a place to sit at one of those, like, yeah, yeah. So you don't have oh, to be okay. I won't be so rude. Maybe yeah. I'll take you up on the upper. But go stand in the middle of the dance floor all night and lean against the fucking wall and. It just yeah. doesn't. It, no. it, I don't know. I don't like that whole vibe at all. No. But it's some people, you know, they see it in movies and they're like, oh, "I want to replicate that movie," and then they go and they're like, "This sucks." Or some people like. I don't know. I guess people like it. It's. I don't understand the appeal. Oh, dude, I kind of miss live shows though. I just realized I was like, talking, "We had concerts." Yeah, I was talking to my friend last night about it, and I was like, "Dude, I miss." I mean, when was the last time I went to a show? Yeah. What the fuck? I haven't seen. I mean, I used to go all the time. I mean, you, you, that's all you did, you know? I lived there. Yeah. But I I just, I was like, oh man, I kind of miss it a lot. You know, it's, it's important. Yeah, it is. I think, I think it is, especially for a place like Vegas, man. Yeah. Just anywhere. It's like, um, one of the funny things about like, uh, touring acts, right? Like come through Vegas and we're, we're, we live here. So it's, it's, we're, uh, like when you go out, you're just like, oh, there's nothing to do. (laughs) That's kind of the vibe I always have when I go out, uh, to other places because it's just like, there literally is so much. You could never do the same thing. Things are opening and closing so fast that you could attempt. I'm going to do every single thing there is to do in Vegas. And by the time you get to the end of the list, that list has to be rewritten completely. And I try and do everything there is to do in Vegas. We're, You'll we're, never run out of shit. We're desensitized. Big time. Yeah, yeah. And so other people, though, that you go, it doesn't matter what the concert is, right? Like if there's like one concert venue in that city uh, and that there's a band coming through. I mean, what else are we doing, right? And it's not my music, but it's nothing else going on, and I want to go see a show. And a lot of people just show up, and you get to see the city kind of yeah, show yeah. up to these events um, and, as opposed to here where it's like, oh, you're in a metal band? Cool. There's 40 other metal shows tonight. So maybe you'll get 140th of the people in this town that like metal to come to your show. And yeah, Vegas is that's weird. That's rough. Yeah, Vegas is a weird place it's gotten it's gone through phases though man i've seen some really cool times where there was just like a lot of really cool shit happening all the time and then you know it f- falls out yeah it thins out and it comes back up slowly and then it gets really cool and then it just goes fizzles out again I, you know, it, i've seen it happen a few times there's happenings right yeah. there's like a, a different spot in town sort of becomes the spot yeah, they yeah. got their formula for that year like what everybody's into that year and they're doing it just right and it's like that spot is fucking popping and then it'll die off yeah. and it's like they're doing the same thing right but people's interests aren't the same the next year and so they they're like hey we're we're still doing the formula over here and they're like we're interested in the the video game mm-hmm. lounge now right and like that popped off and like everybody was fucking going to that thing for a little while uh, and then it died off again, you know, and yeah, it's just, uh, it's interesting to watch because I don't think you, I didn't get that growing up in California when I was growing, you know, when I was, there's yeah. not things just California is different of, of entertainment yeah. just popping up out of nowhere. Uh, it's definitely a unique thing to our what city. Part, what part of California did you grow up in? I grew up in Stockton. Oh shit. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's the like- right answer. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's like that uh that's like in the middle of like the desert right stockton uh no it's a, well yeah it's in the middle of the valley it's like area kind of it's uh, that, hot it's hot as shit there yeah. yeah and that well it's um and we got the delta that comes through from the ocean so oh really i didn't yeah. know so you that close to the ocean no the delta just comes through weird yeah so it's like um like the, like rivers and shit you oh, know cool. and so you'll be hanging out like we'll go kick it on the on the side of the, it's it's not a river, but you know, it's like it's it's pretty wide. But we call it the Delta. It's the Delta, and these big giant shipping uh, container ships 
are coming through almost as wide as the whole freaking thing. And it's like, yeah, everybody's got to get out, you know, like you get your boat out of the way, get over the side, and there's Fuck. big things coming through. Yeah, that's big. Interesting. I didn't yeah. know that. I, that's that's crazy. I didn't I didn't know anything about that. Sounds interesting. Yeah, uh, but uh, the place is, itself is a shithole. There's really no jobs, and it's really, um, it's like one of the cheaper places to live in California. Uh, and so it, it just turned into a fucking cesspool of like gangs and violence and, you know. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard that. Of uh, because the only only reason why is because one of those UFC fighters is from Stockton, yeah, Diaz, yeah, Nate Diaz, yeah, he's always talking about that, so. yeah, that's it, man. I mean, we <laughs> we grew up, we were uh, we were always doing bare knuckle boxing in the backyard because we were tired of getting our asses kicked, you know, it's just like you're always getting jumped or getting in a fight, you know, and it's like, well, you shouldn't fucking be white in Stockton, dumbass, <sighs> you know, you should know better, and it's like, oh, my God, I gotta learn to fucking fight all these people. I don't know how people live in California. I, yeah. it, I mean, I love it. It's beautiful, but it's so fucking expensive. Yeah. And then, like, it's, it's kind of dirty. Like, Yeah, it's gross. Unless you're super rich and you live in, like, Laguna or something or, like, Beverly Hills. Yeah, but even that shit's filled with bums. Dude, yeah, I, I like was, the rich. I like that the bums fuck the rich places yeah. up, you know. It's just like, yeah, I'll, well, take care of them. I was in Silver Lake. My friend lived in Silver Lake, and I went out there and visited. And she's like, "This place is so cool, isn't it?" And I'm like, oh, "God, it's kind of grimy, dude." <laughs> like, I, I was like, yeah. "This place is a little grimy." Like, I don't know, man. But I don't know. I don't like it out there. Uh, yeah, don't. it's it's hard, man. It's hard to live out. I don't know. I don't know how people live because I mean, I felt like. We live in a lot of people, around a lot of people, but yeah. when you're in, like, L.A., it's like, fuck, dude, there's so many people living on top of each other. It's crazy. And it's so overpriced. And, it, like, I lived in San Diego for a little while, and uh, it was four of us in a one-bedroom apartment. Jeez. And it's just like, fuck, man, you know, what are we supposed to do about this? Yeah, and I was— There's nowhere—anybody can afford anything. I was in Coronado. I had the pleasure of being in Coronado for, like, a couple weeks. Love that island. Dude, it was rad. Uh, you remember Sandra? Yeah. Dude, so she was watching somebody's house out there. How tight. So I was like, uh, am, I, am I allowed to go crash on the couch? <laughs> I was like, uh, uh, when, uh, how long am I allowed to stay? <laughs> like, I was like, dude, I'm coming. And she had like surfboards and paddle boards and shit. So I was like. So fun. Yeah, I tried to, I, I tried to learn how to surf. That was super fun. I need to learn how to surf, man. It's, Dude, it's so much fun. It's, it's, it's hard, but. Luckily, we were we were on Coronado Island. We were right off uh, Coronado Beach, um, which or yeah, I think it's Tans Beach. It's like one of the easiest places to learn how to surf. Really small waves, so you don't get beat up. Dude, I spent like four or five days just trying to surf. It was so fucking cool. That's awesome. I finally got to get on the board once or twice, but I mean, I think it takes a little. Yeah, like I was, ta I was talking to some kid, and he's like, "Yeah, it takes about a month of coming consistently." Yeah. Before you start like. You can come up, yeah. have the core strength to stabilize and stay on the board. Yeah, yeah. I, it's it's weird. It's not even like core strength. It's just technique. Is it? It's just technique, It dude. looks like it's a ton of core, it, core it, effort. I mean, it, do your arms. I've never served. Your arms are going to get more tired. But okay. like the um, that it doesn't really take that much effort, but it's definitely technique. It's all technique, dude. Like you have to like sit on the board just right. You have to know how to pop on it just right. Like, which wave to get on. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, there's, like, a lot of things going on. Super fun, though. Like, I would highly recommend if you ever get a chance to try it. Yeah, I definitely want to try it, man. Yeah. It was Maybe somewhere where the water's a little cleaner than California, though. Uh, I mean, it wasn't bad. It wasn't yeah. bad. It, was, it wasn't bad at all. It was, it was super fun. Yeah. Yeah, I think the last time I was down there... Um, there's signs all up and down the beach about like bacterial infection in the Ooh. water and shit. And I was just like, oh, fuck. I had just gotten a fresh tattoo done on my shin. Ooh. And I was like, man, I am where, staying eight feet away from the shoreline. Where, you, where were you at? LA. Oh, pff, yeah. yeah. No, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I ever even been to an LA beach ever. It's gross. Yeah, I mean, like, it's uh, gross. <laughs> Long Beach is nice. I don't mind going to Long Beach. Yeah, it was. But, we were in La Jolla and we went on a kayak. On, on a kayak. Oh, um, La Jolla is beautiful. Yeah, it was really cool. And uh, we were, we were like, you know, we took a tour, so we're, we're paddling out, and the dude's like, "All right, uh, if you guys want to get out into the water, you can." And he's like, "Wait, wait, wait! 
and he looks down. He's like, I don't know, man. It looks weird. And I'm like, what? What is it? And it was like a it was like a plume of algae or something. Oh yeah. Like we could see it, you know. So we like paddled past it and shit. But like he's like, I don't know what that is. But uh, I wasn't gonna let you guys get in it. And I was like, you'll get covered in algae, man. I don't know. I, I don't, or phytoplankton, probably. I don't know. It was weird. Well, you know what it was too. Like there was this thing that happened a couple of days before in that part of the Southern California. And it's like where these fish come out at night and they spawn. Oh, okay. So like they just go to the shore and they like, you know, release all this egg and sperm, I guess, mm-hmm. to like fertilize the eggs, you know? Um, but maybe that's what it was. I don't know. Maybe, maybe yeah. It could have been leftover stuff from that I, or it could have been, um, you know, uh, stuff eating that. Yeah. yeah. I, I asked him about it, but it did, the dude didn't know. Well, he didn't know what I was talking about. I was like, oh, never mind. the ocean's a trip man when i was a kid i used to take uh, marine biology classes at csu over the summers and i uh it really fucked me all up because i i learned about all the little stuff in the ocean you know i went there and we were learning about whales and stuff like that at first like the first summer and then uh the second classes i was taking we learned about all the little shit and all the little jellyfishes and the little you know all these and i was just like man i will go in to my knees and then I am fucking yeah. over it. Microscopic yeah. shit that goes inside you. Yeah, you, know, you, you don't know. even know what the fuck those <laughs> waves are pulling everything yeah. up towards you. Not to mention, like, I if you notice my uh, my fish tank behind you, I, I do saltwater aquariums and oh, it's like, sweet. when you're looking at those waves coming up, right, uh, there's that froth over the top and that's just like ammonia buildup. It's, uh, I have a device underneath my system that it fucking uses a power head to force uh water through a tapered cylinder into a collection cup and it skin it's a skimmer protein skimmer and it's just fucking pr- it's all the it's all the poop and and, so, and it, it from the fish and so that ammonia build up you're talking about it's just yeah. like fish waste yeah fish waste and death and and it's just all, all that foam over the top of the waves coming yeah. up it's if it, it brings it into the shore and like it's like a filter frosts it frosts it up it hits the sand bed comes down everything's picking through the sand bed eating all this little stuff out and cleaning it all and it goes up into the tide pools and you know yeah it's like the the ocean's a huge natural filtration system mm-hmm. and all the the currents that push it all through uh through the entire globe you know it, it it's amazing what it does yeah, and how pretty, it cleans itself yeah it, yeah, it's pretty cool. I I mean, I, I love it. It's weird, too, because I never even considered myself, like, an ocean person, you know? Yeah. But it's definitely, I don't know, it's one of, one of those things that I'm definitely, a try, like, a, I'm, a, I gravitate to, you know? Oh, yeah, the water, man. Yeah, it was fun, dude. Like, I, I, wanted, I, I wanted to go back, but, you know, like, not working right now and shit. I was like, fuck, I don't know if I want to drive 300 miles and stay out there for a couple weeks again. Yeah. But I'm really tempted to. It's beautiful out there, man. It really is. San dude, Diego, Corona, or um, Coronado. Dude, I was driving to the beach like every morning. It was so cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I was like, I was like, I was living like a right, a rich white person. Yeah. <laughs> In Coronado, it was, it was fucking, it was fun. We uh, we found a killer spot. Um, fuck, I, I think it was near Long Beach, but uh. That was just a, it was right next to the beach and it like, it was like a house that got split up into four sections and there's parking underneath and they're like, yeah, it's pretty, it was like a hundred plus dollars a day or something like that. Mm. Uh, might have, might have been closer to, it wasn't that expensive, you know, uh, for a spot on, on the, the beach, beach. Yeah. and you got to stay there for like three days and like leave our house and walk straight to the beach and, That's cool. uh, and there's nothing like that, man. That's fantastic. It was totally worth it. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. It was it was pretty cool. I don't think I've ever been able to experience that because it's so expensive. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like I I got a free surfboard, so I was like, you know, I could just you know you don't have to rent nothing. Just drove to the beach and just like hung out. It was it was pretty cool. Yeah, that's what we try to do. My buddy Joe will, uh, put us up. He lives down in L.A. Uh, and. Uh, we go down there and I get a fucking tattoo and we hang out and fuck around and we'll just crash at his fucking place and go to the beach and it's, and it's really nice. It's convenient to have friends that can yeah. let you crouch surf so you can go experience the oh, world. Yeah, yeah. I got my buddy up in, uh, my buddy Ray up in Oregon does the same thing. He also tattoos me. <laughs> I fly up there and we get it. I'll get a tattoo yeah. done and I'll crash on his couch and yeah, dude, hang out in Oregon for a week. Yeah, I've been meaning to go back up there. I went out there a few years ago, um, drove up to Washington and back. Oh, best. holy shit. It was amazing. 
you can breathe up there, right? Like the air. Dude, the grocery stores, man. Oh, I know. The grocery stores. Oh, nice. that, that's what blew me away. I was like, what the fuck? So is this what real fruit looks like? Everything there was so ripe and delicious and juicy. Oh, yeah. And the seafood. Holy shit. Oh, my God. It was amazing. The beaches, too. Like, we go to this, uh, we go up into the woods, and it's like, I think it's like the Devil's Gulch or some, something like that is what the nickname for the place is. But uh, it's this fantastic uh, beach area that the trees go right up to the shore, and, like, you can climb down this mountain path that you, you like, park on the top, and the ocean's way the fuck down there. And you walk down it, and there's tide pools everywhere. This is it Oregon? It's in Oregon, yeah. Oh. It's like an hour away from my buddy's house in Eugene. And uh, it's just the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Like, I, it, everything out there is beautiful. Driving through that forest is incredible. It's like freaking uh, fantasy movie. You know, you're in Lord of the Rings all of a sudden, yeah, driving yeah. through the mountains. And then you get to the edge of a cliff, and the ocean's there, and it's coming up. And it's just like, is this real, man? You know, because in California, it's just it's destroyed it's yeah. disheveled right it's like it's buildings all, all the way, way up to the yeah. shoreline and then sand that i don't even know is that the sand that was there originally or they import that fucking too is that fake as well who knows right it's just like it's probably the original shit i'm just being a dick no, but uh, i'm sure there's i'm sure there's beaches that don't have natural sand yeah and uh it it's just it doesn't feel the same it doesn't feel the same at all you know there's there's bums everywhere and there's a skate park right there and a bunch of tourists and a pier and it's just like i feel like i'm at a fake beach i'm mean, like i'm is this a disneyland beach did they make this whole thing yeah. just so we can tourists can come and pay money to hang out here um but when you're up there in oregon it's just like this is this is the ocean this is nature yeah i remember driving back down and we only got to see a little bit of the coast because uh, we were going from Portland to San Francisco. So you can only stay so lo so long on the coast before you have to cut through. Yeah. Know? But it was so fucking cool. Like Northern Cali, uh, Southern Oregon coast. Does the 101 go up that high? I think so. That, I think we were on the 101 for a little while. That's the one with the view all the way down the, yeah, the but west we didn't, coast. Yeah, we didn't get to go all the way down California, though. It was yeah. just in the the corner but it was fucking dope dude like it's i got a bunch so of beautiful i got a bunch of drone footage just but it was really windy so like it was kind of hard to fly but it was so cool it was <laughs> it was dope that happened to be the last time i went to uh to la my freaking drone smashed itself into a tree. i was filming the i was filming the skate park and uh, you know getting some cool shots and then my drone just goes i'm going this way where are you what were you flying uh dgi th uh three the phantom three yeah phantom three <laughs> So, yeah, it was nice. Did it did it break? It did, and it it almost destroyed that camera. It's got a little chip in it. Oh, so you you had a you had the wireless gimbal set up. Yeah, I had the whole gimbal set up yeah. and everything, man. It was it, it did some cool stuff. Yeah, I have a Phantom Two like that, but do you? I, I don't want to fly it anymore. I yeah, got, I ended up getting a Phantom Four. Oh, cool. Yeah, like I ended up buying a bunch of my friend's hand me down stuff. Like he always upgrades, and I just buy his, his used stuff. That's the way to do it, man. Yeah. That's how I got into tattooing. <laughs> what? You have a tattoo machine? <laughs> it's terrible, dude. It's from it's, it's from, from twenty years ago or whatever. It's it's from jail. <laughs> yeah, it's basically like, dude, it's shit. My buddies my buddies who are tattoo artists, I was like, check out my, my machine and they laugh hell. They're like, I've never even used one of these old pieces of shit. Wow. But uh I wanted to be a body piercer and then I got into body piercing and the guy that was teaching me is like, Oh, I got a new gun. You want my old gun? It's it's like uh it's like the the gun, the machine, and the the power supply are both like covered in flames, and it used to be a dope machine, but compared to the machines they have nowadays, it's garbage. Really? Yeah, and uh, I mean, I was able to get some straight lines out of the motherfucker, but what, what, on what, like grapefruit, or did you tattoo yourself? No, I tattooed my my thighs all tattooed up, oh, and shit. then <laughs> I have I got a big piece of plexiglass because it kind of bounces a little bit. You can tattoo fruit and stuff like that, but it's it's really hard to get a straight line on plexiglass. Oh, okay. So like I was like, oh, I'm gonna fucking make this work, and then I started tattooing my friends once I was able to get straight lines to happen. Where I'm like, it's it's fighting me, and I can still make it work. Oof. Um, and then all my friends have garbage tattoos for me. <laughs> it's a great little thing in our that's, circle. Everyone's like, uh, yeah, yeah, this one right here is the one Jason did. That's awesome. And it's just shit. <laughs> it's just totally terrible. It, it looks like you did it in the back of a truck in the dirt road. And shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like well, a, cause we were young and I had a tattoo gun and we drank all the time. Yeah. So we'd be drinking and they'd be like, yo, I got a great idea for a tattoo. And then. <laughs> And I'd be like, um, I don't give a shit. Let's do it. 
That's awesome. I can't draw, but uh, sure, I'll do a Grim Reaper on your fucking arm. Dude. This is like, ugh, it comes out okay. At least they can trace. There's this artist, uh, I forget what his name is, like Fousey or some shit. And he's a, he's like a graffiti artist, I think, from like France. Yeah. But that's how he, that's his thing. It's like his stick. Like he gives really bad tattoos. <laughs> they look like fucking jailhouse tattoos and shit, dude. Like uh, it, and people pay him a lot of money to do it. It's fucked up. That's I, ridiculous. Yeah, I think it's because he um, he probably has like some kind of a following or something. You know what I mean? He has like he's, he's I guess he's like a well, well known artist. I don't know. But he just gives, like, the worst fucking tattoos ever. And, like, people pay him. Like, he has, like, a whole Instagram page, just some shitty tattoos that he gives people. <laughs> it's pretty pretty interesting. That's fantastic, man. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I was always, like, uh, at your own risk, bro. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, you, should, you, should, uh, you should just do it. Be like, yo, man, I give tattoos. They you, suck. <laughs> you uh, give them a waiver. <laughs> like the sign, dude. I had a, I have a couple of those. I still have them in my box. Uh, but like some of my friends were like sixteen, seventeen oh, when shit. I was doing it, and th- so their parents signed a waiver. I don't even know if it's still legal, but I have a contract. Like I was like, I ain't tattooing you until your fucking folks sign a waiver. I'm not getting sued by your fucking parents. Oh my god! You know? But I mean, we had a circle. You know, it was like I was kind of in the middle, and I go all the way down to like maybe fifteen to like the guys that are older or maybe like 23 and everything in between. It was just a big metal circle. And, uh, a lot of us knew each other from school. And then some of them were little brothers of people and shit. So I was just like, whatever, everybody wants a fucking tattoo. That, so. that, that's awesome. You should start like a little, like photo collage of all the tattoos you've given. Like <laughs> I should, I should find it, track everybody yeah. down and see yeah. how they're doing. Yeah. 20 year old tattoos. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah, it's uh my like my buddy Ray I hang out with all the time. We were just in the pool. He's got a big Jack Daniels logo I put on the side of him. <laughs> the circles just like the logo looks all right. Like I wish I could just take a real thick needle and go around the circle one more time. Or it's someone just, someone who can draw a circle, someone who can draw a circle should take a thick needle and, and go around it because I can't draw a circle, especially not on someone's ribs. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, it's almost there, but the the line isn't perfect. That's awesome. And. uh yeah, and my buddy got a big iron cross on his forearm, and it's just, dude, it's hard to make symmetrical things. Yeah. It's hard. I was always trying to encourage people, can I just, like, write some wor- letters on you? That, that's I got that down. <laughs> my gonna, letters come out good. <laughs> I'm just going to print something on you. Yeah. That's funny. So, yeah, it was a, it was a fucking mess, man. I got out of it pretty quickly. I, don't, I think I did it for, like, a year, and I was like, this isn't for me. You're like this isn't working at all. I'm not happy with this, um, and it's it's not even that it was challenging. It just wasn't. It was. I wanted to pierce. I liked the piercing. My piercings were coming out okay. I was doing some. I was doing some cool shit with piercing, um, but I just dropped the whole the whole fucking thing and and left. So. Yeah, I have a couple of friends of mine that are piercers. I don't know if I could do that though, man. Yeah, I'm not into hurting people. I'm not. I'm not into that. And so that was always my fucking problem, man. It was like, I was just like, I do it and then I hurt somebody and I just be like, I don't like doing that. Yeah. I like getting piercings, right? I was super into, and I pierced myself, uh, tattoo myself. I was fucking loving that. It didn't bother me at all. But when I was hurting someone else, it fucking bothered me. And I was just like, this is, I don't have this in me. This isn't my, this isn't my game. You know, this is someone else's game. And I had to bail on it all. Yeah, I actually watched my friend split somebody's tongue, and I almost, I almost passed out. I couldn't do it. I, I can't do it. I almost passed out. I remember it was like, like fifteen years ago, and I was in like taking pictures of it and shit, and like, and then like the girl looks over and he's like, "Do you look green? You should sit down." <laughs> and I was like, "What?" And they're like, "Just you go sit down over there." Oof. Because it was like it was like watching like middle mid- medieval torture. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. I was. It was pretty brutal. That's fucked up, man. <laughs> yeah, there's some there's some amazing things they can do to modify your body now, man. Yeah. Uh, one of the fucked up ones my buddy Joe Kilmeister got is called a transcrotal. He, oh. have you heard of this? I know what a transcrotal is. Yeah, he got one done, bro, and it's it's fucking ridiculous. It's a big old fucking uh, gauge. They have to oh, take yeah. a scalpel. Oh yeah, that's the that's the um, sideshow guy, right? Sideshow Joe, yeah. Yeah, Joe Kilmeister. I think you know him. 
I don't. He's on know, Instagram a I, lot. I don't know if I know him personally. I think I, I met him. Him and yeah. his wife, right? Yeah. He does a thing in his nose. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah. True. So my homie, I think my homie's the one that did his nuts. Oh really? Yeah. That's awesome. He did a fantastic job, by the way. I think they did it together. I think yeah. Because he does it too, right? He tattoos. Oh. Yeah, he's a tattoo artist. Joe is. Oh, I thought he was doing piercings at one time. He I'm might sure, have. I'm, I'm sure he like. He probably fucked around. A lot of tattoo artists. It, yeah. it, when you're in that, when you're in that world, yeah, it kind of goes hand in hand. He could put his whole fist through it, right? Like Maybe I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's like gnarly. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's brutal, and he's lifting stuff with his nuts. Oh, he got fuck. it to like, cause it's it's above the it's above the nutsack, below the shaft, right? So it's like, and it's just just they they take a scalpel and they cut everything and then they sew yeah. it back together and then put a, a holder in it oh so it stays God. open yeah. and then you can put a big gauge ring through it and then it's pretty tensile yeah. you know that that skin's like yeah. flexible and sturdy and so he's like he can hang weight off of it and pick it up he's trying to like he's trying to strengthen the um, you know oh you increase the amount of weight yeah. he can lift because he does this the sideshow thing yeah, right he's yeah. the psycho clown sideshow thing and he's a Amateur wrestler. Joe's amazing. I, I went to high school with Joe. Oh, what? Yeah, he's from Stockton. Oh, shit. Yeah, and uh, and we grew up together, and he was just this skinny, you know, punk kid. He was a fucking ICP kid, you know, a uh, uh, juggalo. Oh. He was a juggalo. <laughs> what? I didn't you know that. Yeah. <laughs> I love juggalos, man. I they whoop, are whoop. The, they're the funnest people <laughs> to it, hang out with. Isn't that what they do, right? Yeah, they're insane people, man. Oh I'll, man, dude, yeah. I always crack jokes on uh, uh, my juggalo buddies or like people that that claim to be juggalos online, and I'm just like, uh, we, you know, we'll party, but uh, you ain't coming over to my fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I'll definitely party with you though. Yeah. Uh, oh man. Yeah, we did a uh, um. When I was in the Cracker Man band, we went went to uh, this festival and we played with Twisted. Okay. Yeah. And they had a ton. And there was another there's another rapper there that was also part of like the uh, Juggalo family. And so Twisted was on the the big stage, which we got to play too. We were fucking proud of ourselves. And uh, and then there was like this separate room where this other guy was doing it. And both times, man, like that that Juggalo crowd is fantastic, just fantastic. Dude, where were you guys at? Uh, out in this old, broken down like amphitheater in Boston. Whoa, and that's cool. It was supposed to be haunted, and we were like, uh, we were fucking around. Like the the seating's just destroyed. It, it's just it's. I, I'm surprised they let people in that building. You know what I mean? Like it feels like the building's falling apart and it could collapse at any time. But yeah, it's a. Uh, it was a trip, man, and yeah, we had a lot of fun with those Juggalo people and like just uh, enjoying their energy and like all the, you know, when they're on stage, when the Twisted guys are on stage and yeah, the Juggalos are fucking getting it, dude. They get it. They get it. <laughs> they're, they're they're super friendly, right? Yeah. yeah, they're like super like like hippies and shit, right? Dude, they are. Yeah. They are. They're fucking weirdos, you know, <laughs> and. Uh, and I'm a weirdo, so we get along. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, Did, they, didn't they play like fucking like the that sal saloon upstairs once back in the day? ICP. Yeah. Oh man, I don't remember. Maybe it was upstairs just... show for ICP is a bad call. Whoever made that one. <laughs> The place downstairs just like fucking ceilings <laughs> leaking Fago for the next fucking month. <laughs> um, That's crazy. I don't remember that. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. We uh we had him at the House of Blues. I got to work with them one time, and uh, they have a 53-footer full of gear and then another 53-foot truck full of pallets of Fago. What, what's Fago? It's soda. <laughs> it's good soda, too. It doesn't have high fructose corn syrup in it. Oh, so man. it's like, yeah, it's like I actually I, I like Fago. If I'm fucked up and 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 someone gives me a cotton candy Fago, I'm drinking that. So I never, I don't know what that that correlation is. What it's is, cheap. I know, but I what think. what's the thing for why do they need that soda? Oh, they spray it all over everybody. Oh my god. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. So they go and they they just are. They're just getting handed fucking two liters of Fago, and they fucking shake them up as hard as they can, and then they flip them over like a rocket and crack the lid off and fucking let it go over the crowd. Oh, my God. And, dude, our, so the House of Blues had all, it has all that wood. Yeah. All that old wood that's like, we had a rip, it, it, it destroyed all of it. That fucking, it was like a, uh, flooded like that deep, maybe deeper, what? and that, a whole house of blues pit was just 
Fago. And then uh, they had bottles and bottles and bottles up in the um, chandelier. Oh, just stuck. that chandelier so expensive, and they were shooting it. They were r- aiming for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just uh, r- rapscallion, rambunctious motherfuckers. You know, they were just like, "Look at that expensive thing!" <laughs> and so we had to drop it to the floor and get boom lifts and like repel. I didn't. I watched my friends do it. Uh, I, I put speakers <clears throat> up. <laughs> wow! That- watched my friends repel from a boom lift into the inside of the fucking chandelier because we couldn't get them from underneath you know what i mean it was like they just they got them in there they fucking ruined the whole place i guarantee that that cost them money to have icp play there and i laughed the whole time i was like i saw it on the thing you know they're going to destroy this building right and they're like nah it'll be good that sounds crazy (laughs) now i'm now i want to go to an icp show i'd go to a yeah i'll go to an icp show It's fun. So, like, so does that shit get, is it sticky? Oh, it's so sticky. Oh, gross. It's real sugar, you know, <laughs> so it's super sticky. And, uh, and, dude, and they don't fuck around. They they launch it the whole time. They're just fucking getting it and getting it and getting it and getting it. Like, so, the whole time they're playing, they go through, like, a pallet. So you have Maybe to, like, two. take a shower when you're done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. they definitely do. I mean, the cr- like if you go to a, if you go to the crowd. Oh yeah, it's yeah. like a guar concert. You know, you <laughs> yeah. you you leave yeah. a guar concert and you're yeah. just covered in blood and yeah. cum and whatever else they're spraying on you. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> that's why you wear a white shirt. You yeah. know, you go, yeah. wow, fucking stained with blood from the guar concert. Yeah, yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, so it's fun, man. It's a blast. I love that kind of stuff where it's uh, it's like crowd participation. At uh at a show, man, it's it's so fun. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Friggin' uh, I I did one where um we did a band called Lord, and Lord, yeah, with an E L O R D E, and they do. Uh, let me look up their website. I'll show you a picture of them. They do um the same thing. They're like they do the Guar thing, and uh, I was, I was pulling up the chick singer Lord. Oh, yeah, Hang on I, a second. I let me you... type in Lord Band. I bet I, I, I'll find them. And uh, they, oh, maybe they changed their name. Maybe they're gone. Uh, they, so anyways, no one showed up, right? Like they, they fucking, they're a new band and they're doing this crazy thing. And I've never heard of them before. And I work in the industry. So it's like, yeah, this is not a popular band at this point. And so like two people showed up and they have, and they're like, fuck it, cancel the show. And then Live Nation's like not happening. You know, go out and we paid you for the tour. That's how so sometimes you're an independent, you know, sometimes you're a band and you go out and tour. And sometimes like um, Madonna is a great example of this, right? Like sh- they just give her millions of dollars and she does whatever the fuck they say. Right? We need you to perform these dates this year. And here's your yearly salary. So a lot of bands get that deal and they go. And so in this situation, it's one of those deals and they just go, fuck it. We're not playing for two people. Give them their two tickets back. And they go, not happening. Get the fuck out there and dance, monkey. And, uh, and so they got to go out there and uh, power blast these guys with giant cannons full of all kinds of colored liquids, right? And they're just these two dudes in the front row, and he's got it between his legs like a cock, and he's just blasting him in the face, and he's he's got nowhere to go, so he just keeps hitting the kid in the face the whole time. Oh, it was the funniest thing, man. I just, I, uh, like the the waitress, the waitresses and the waiters and shit are coming down. They're like. Why are they shooting all their? Uh, why are they shooting all the liquid during rehearsal? That doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> this is the show. <laughs> this is a rehearsal. Oh, man. That's the crowd. That's everybody. And I mean, I've I played to fucking I played to empty rooms. You know, it's part of the yeah. It's part it's of part the- of the cost of being a musician. But when you're doing that kind of gimmick and playing to an empty room, it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Dude, you should have got a video of that. I'm sure they did, but I'm pretty sure. Um, it's not like yeah. I can't show it, yeah. but uh, that yeah, there's there's so much of that in the industry. Whenever you're like, I have so many cool stories, but I can't really tell them on camera. Yeah. Uh, but some of me, I mean, like that happened in public, right? I can't tell all the backstage stuff, but like, I mean, you can't tell some of it, but you know, yeah, you got to be <clears throat> careful about it. And then sharing video is like ruthless. But uh, I try to I try to mind my p's and q's, <laughs> not really not reveal any stuff I'm not supposed to tell. Yeah, yeah. Because there's so much of it. It gets mixed. It gets mixed moshed. And then sometimes I forget. I'm like, 
on camera, not fucking talking shit just to my buddy. <laughs> and it's like, oh, wait, 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 let me backstep. Let me backstep. But yeah, man. So uh, who else are you going to be interviewing on your podcast? Uh, right now I have, um, it's called Vatican Falling. And they are coming in uh, tomorrow to do their thing. And let me type them up. I'll, put, I'll do a little spotlight on them while we wrap this thing up. I think we just hit the two-hour mark, brother. Told you it goes by fast. Yeah, that's pretty quick. Yeah. Um, here's their page. So, yeah, they're just a you know, metal band. Been talking to uh, Thomas Palmer. And uh, I know I've probably worked with them a couple times at Vamps, just some other clubs like that. So let me pull this up here. Boom, Vatican Falling coming to the fucking uh, podcast. Here's their band camp. Let's pull that up, huh? Sweet. Yeah, so it should be fun, man. And uh, I like having bands on. I like having uh, music to play. Although YouTube, I got I to gotta start doing something <laughs> like get people to sign something when they come here and send it to YouTube because every time I have a band on here, they're like, hey, play my music video. And then YouTube's like, hey, you're pirating someone else's music video. And I'm like, they're on the show with me, giving me permission on camera, telling me to play their music video. I definitely have permission to play this music video. I have them yeah, yeah. on camera and YouTube just goes, not good enough. And it's like, God damn it. And so that whole podcast don't count. And it's like, that's not going to be monetized. That's so weird. Yeah. So it's like I have to get something in print that I can email to them from the band, like official, pain in my ass. You know what I mean? To have these. But it's worth it. Whatever I got to do. Because I like having the bands on. And eventually I'd like to have a space for them to play. That's not my kitchen. That'd be cool. Where I jam at. That'd be really cool. So, yeah, because I have all my buddies' bands coming on all the time. And and so it's like, why not? And then. So you would have like. Basically, it would be like kind of like this, but you would have everything mic'd. Yeah, and I do actually have everything mic'd over there uh, and ready to rock and hooked up to a console. It's just, I don't know, it's it's the corner, right? It's like if I'm practicing with my friends, it's great. I don't know. Maybe if I, I'll, I'll, I'll try it one time or. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to get more cameras too, right? Yeah, I could probably move these around yeah. and do like these three cameras as a, as a three shot for the band. Yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe I could like move couches in the living room and just do like a second setup with the band. I don't know. I don't know. I'd like to get live, st- live performances on here. Though. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be really cool. It'd be really tight. But, uh, but yeah, we're, we're past the two hour mark, brother. We made it. Oh, that sweet. Goes by so fast, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it just, was. It was fast. It's super fun, man. I really uh, appreciate it. So let me do the little thing here. Well, I want to go. Uh, I want to thank my guest, Christian Torres, coming on my podcast. I always have you as Catasco in my brain, so I have to yeah. remember your real name. Yeah, yeah. Every time I look at, it, I'm like, wait, don't say Catasco. No, it's all good. So my guest, uh, Christian Torres, Catasco from Instagram. Uh, yeah. Thanks for coming on my podcast. I want to have you back. Yeah, We're dude, I'm, I'm down to come back. I'm down to go to the yoga thing with you too, man. That'd be fun. Dude, let's have some fun, man. Yeah. It'll be down. a blast. So, yeah. Well, thanks for watching. Peace. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching my podcast. You can check out more podcasts right here and subscribe by clicking right here. We are a new podcast every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.